Building Committee. It is Wednesday, September 11th, 2019. Um, uh, we are meeting in the police station uh, community room, and we believe we're being recorded for broadcast on Amherst Media. I will call us to order, as we have a quorum of, of many members. Um, the first item after the call to order is approval of minutes. Uh, I believe I distributed them. Did anyone have corrections to that? I know it's odd for me to suggest a couple of corrections to it. But uh, I don't know if you saw my late breaking thought I to add not. Tony's actual letter oh, of comment. Yep. And instead of my summarizing it in item, uh, whatever it is, it's the first one, the public comment. Three to just put a note that it is a document. To see the document to make it an additional attachment. I did see that email, and I, I should have probably distributed. It. I didn't do that. I don't think. I, if, unless you think it, I just it would be more accurate. It's another document that was sort of in front of us. Yeah. Very I tend good. to think it's the right thing to yep. do to attach the actual statement if you have one. Yep. yep. So, so we've we've done that in the past. We have. Yep. So we'll just delete this and make a note too. Discussion on that or other comments, corrections? Okay. Um, I would take a volunteer for recording today's minutes. Does anyone, by the way, need um, agenda? Wait, do we need to approve okay. those minutes? Well, I guess we could approve it. I, my preference would be if, if folks will do it, approve with that correction or amendment. Why not? Or addition or whatever Motion you want to, to call it. Approve the minutes Great. with the addendum as noted by Rudy. Second. All in favor? Okay. That way I don't have to, as chair, approve two things at the end. So, um, and returning to that, that, that question of a minute taker for tonight, um, while I haven't done them in a while, and I don't object to myself doing them, I'm a little nervous that if I have to approve them and do them, that that's probably not the right thing to do. So I would love it if someone would volunteer. You're hoping somebody who's never actually done them might approve? Well, that would be also nice. But <laughs> not, that I'm, not that I'm pointing fingers on anyone. But there, if there's anyone who hasn't done them yet, maybe they should step up. I think everyone has done them. Oh, that's not true. Yeah, it's not true. Yeah, it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the person who's actually writing some of these down. Mr. Mr. Nakajima, I sent a volunteer. I second uh, that number. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> there was going to be an awkward pause that I was not going to be able to <laughs> feel like I was going to live through. Next item is public comments. Uh, we do not have uh, any members of the public today, tonight, or at least not yet. Um, so we can move on from that. Uh, does anyone want copies of the agenda? I made copies, but I wasn't sure. If anyone yes. My one. Here you go. There you go. Especially since you have to take the notes or one. Um, uh, so the next item is, is kind of winding up to the events uh, a week from yesterday, uh, which is the presentation to the school committee and the town council of uh, the nice, great, big, heavy report that we have right here. Um, uh, but before we go into reviewing, I just want to ask one thing, and just, I guess, to decide whether or not it's going to be a three-way meeting. In other words, are we going to have enough interest from our own group that we technically have to call ourselves and do a meeting at that event. Um, and if I could just get kind of a notion of who, who's planning to attend that. Who's not. I know Maria, you're away, and I just saw, saw a nodding on the head of no. I will not be there. Okay. What the date is? Uh, it's the 17th at 6. So do you know at what time are we supposed to be there? We, we are the, 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 the first thing on the formal agenda, and I'm going to let Eric cut me off if I get this wrong, but the, late, the last that I heard, um, I would expect that that you know TSKP will probably have the the okay to start talking at about quarter after you know okay. something like that. Um, and I don't want to I don't want to to discourage people from going. I just want to know if I have to let the other bodies know that by the way we will also be at quorum. So. Will we be at quorum if they're both not here? I, I suspect we will not. But given that we have some members that aren't here tonight, so how does it work with Mike Morris? He's not Mike a is not a voting member, member, right? Not a voting member. Um, if Diane yes. is there for other reasons, technically she's 
she would count for it. Or if Ben is there, that's the only there. way that you get to quorum. Right. If, if everybody else in this room except for Allison and I show up, that's how you get to quorum. Rudy. Really? Eric made the point that our committee is dissolved automatically upon presentation to the school committee. Does that mean we are not in existence as of that meeting? <laughs> that's way too technical okay. for me to know the <laughs> answer. <laughs> you know, uh, the, it, to be cautious, I would right. say that it would be at the that's end of that meeting we would cease to be. Then um, we should, I will also not be there. So, okay. that so, yeah. so it's not, it sounds like I can that say that we settles the deal. It's yeah. vanishingly small. Okay, then that we, we, will, we will be <laughs> unlikely be to, to be there. Yeah, I'll be there. Okay. I, I'm going to be there. <laughs> should we just so. post it in, in an abundance of caution? I may, but, I, but if I think if I do the math of, of who we have left on our committee, with three gone, three not in attendance, we won't get to one. I think just post it just in case so that we are not breaking any. We don't control it, we don't control okay. it, we don't control it, but then there's no. There's that no is harm. true, there's, there's no harm in, in doing that, so that's, that's what we will do. Um, okay, so unless there's more to discuss on that topic, I would love to turn it over to Richard to start looking at the, um, the, the draft presentation for, for that event in six days. Sure. And then, uh, as we have time, uh, talk about the other items. Sure. So this evening I brought uh, two bound copies of the report. Um, there's one copy here yep. between you and Eric. Um, and then there's another one here. Um, there's a lot of material in here. Um, it's pretty impressive. Printed on both sides. It's pretty heavy. It's got 629 pages. I would encourage you to flip through it quickly. Just, uh, <laughs> I know the appendix, uh, the appendix is 310 pages. Yes. I'm sorry? The appendix is 310 pages. Oh, okay. So the appendix alone is 310 pages. So, um, I'm going to read it. Does anybody want to read it? <laughs> 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 so, I what thought. What bond papers are printed on? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 no, it's a good pretty, quality it's paper. Pretty, it's nice. It looks it. So, um, I would bring some copies to the joint uh, yep. meeting. And uh, before everyone arrived, Eric and I were talking about how many copies would be appropriate. Um, it costs a little less than $100 per copy. Um, so we get reimbursed. We can provide whatever copies you want and have them delivered in advance. Um, we can provide them for the members of the school committee, the members of the town council. Or we can just do a few copies and submit them that can be put to the superintendent's office, maybe the facility director's office, maybe the town library, maybe yeah. the town manager's office. Eric? In our discussion, my thought, initial thought of them, since the way that most people are likely to access the report is electronically, um, that my thought was that we could have one copy for the Jones Library, one copy for the school department, one copy for town hall, and then the files electronically transferred so that we can post them. Yep. That, that had been will be initially discussed months and months ago. Was that I have to be supportive of, of not making more use of paper than we need to. So how many copies top total? I heard three. That's three. Only three. And I think you would deliver them to yeah. us collectively and somehow we would make sure they got to the place that they belong. So I can I can bring the three copies that evening yep. and uh, then uh, we'll look to you to where they can be found. Yes, um, well, sorry. Um, are, are, are documents being collected somewhere else other than town hall or whatever? Where is like our minutes and all that sort of stuff? Remember, much, and I won't claim that we've got everything, but much of what we've generated is on the website on the town hall or the town's website under our physical, um, physical printouts. Much again is in a binder at the, the library. library. Yeah. The library. Um, and like so it's an, it's not nearly as robust as because if you see the report is that day, you can imagine if every time they brought one of these to a meeting, yeah. if I had tried to put that in the library binder, it would be unruly. Um, so that mostly just has uh, meeting reports with attachments. That's why I'm just advocating for things to be meeting attachments rather than loose things. Um, it, that is a couple months behind now, but I envision that just being superseded by right. this. One of these documents. So if it goes to the library, it's going to be with any other papers that were 
Yeah, I wouldn't envision. I, I would envision retiring the existing binder and replacing it with this. I as long as it would exist in uh, on the website, if people yeah. wanted to go yeah, back and question, look at things. Yeah. So, yeah. question I have is that we have to ask the town because once we cease to exist, would there be still access to the the documents or they will be hidden? Committees that are done are just archived. They're in the section that everything that everything that was there will still be accessible. Would we be archived on Wednesday morning, or would be? No, I need to. I'd probably need to tell someone, the webmaster, that it was happening, and I have no idea what the timeline is for that. But all that happens is it, there's a list of all the committees. We would move from the top to the bottom. Okay. Functionally, that would all. But if you did a change. Google search, sorry, sorry, uh, for Fort River School Building Committee, you would still get there. One would, one, would, one would assume, I, yeah. That's um, actually to, to check. Well, I, I, do, I don't think it would stop being crawled. I don't think that would happen, if that's what you're asking. I don't think there's a no robot. Right. I, this, this, we would be getting too into the weeds on this, but yeah. one of my questions also is, did you have any thought as whether Town Hall was going to put this document up somewhere that was otherwise accessible? I mean, like, if the, if the committee is archived, is there some other place that goes, or um, B, does it go to the, are you assuming the school department would put it up someplace, or C, do you not know and we can figure it out later? I don't know. <laughs> My assumption is that it would probably, I don't, even, I don't even know what office in town would honestly take custody of it, probably facilities. Um, are you talking about on the website or the physical? He's talking about, he's talking about the <coughs> No, I'm talking about the electronic. Oh, the electronic? Yes. Like not our meeting notes, but just this. Yeah, so yeah, it would yeah. make oh. sense that it would be on the district. I'm fine with that. I'm just, I just wanted to know, because I, I figured like, if that's true, then one of my responsibilities is probably to talk to Mike and others and make sure that we create a place that if somebody's looking for I mean, I, no, forgive right. me for saying this. The reason I thought about this is because if we're saying we're archiving the committee website, which makes sense in some ways, I want to make sure that there's a more visible location that someone doesn't have to like. I don't want someone to have to like go crazy searching to find the copy of the report. It should be easy to find. Can, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Can I suggest that we add one more copy to give to the facilities, town, either town facilities or school facilities, person church? We have a lot collected, a lot of information about one building, and I think to give it back to facilities, like okay, here this is. Well, um, if we have the electronic, sorry, uh, we have the electronic copy, we can print off copies too, and that, that may be what we want to do. I get a hundred dollars a pop. I don't know. I, I don't think there's much use in getting it to town facilities now that now that town and school facilities have separated offices. Their okay. their town or facilities school, aren't really or school facilities. Yeah. Well, I mean, R Rupert and Sean are. Not far from each other. But I I don't I don't really see the need, and no one from the school is actually here. So I don't think we need. I mean, I think if they have the electronic and there's a bound copy yeah. kicking around the central office, okay. it'll if Rupert needs it, he'll just get it from Mike, and they'll, they'll look at it. Okay. Otherwise, okay. look at the files. So the answer is three copies. Yep. <laughs> 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 And Eric following up on getting it posted prominently somewhere. Yes. In your role as a school committee person. There's an initiatives tab that would probably be good on. So um, I guess I'll just ask this committee in the interest of full transparency. While this report has been drafted, I have not posted the various iterations of the report that have been hosted on their Google Drive. I didn't think that was really useful or and potentially confusing if they were out there. Right. Is everyone okay with the iteration, previous iterations of the report not being prominent anywhere? To me, not, not being available from the town. Anywhere, anywhere right? Anywhere. Yeah, they, they wouldn't be now. Right. I, I, I don't know about that. I mean, I, I was just going to make sure, want to make sure that prior to, sometime between tonight when we put the final I and cross the T, um, that an electronic copy is available so that any of the school committee members or council members or public that would want to look at it before the 
the 17th can do so, so they're not like going in completely cold, like, what you got, right? I mean, it's 600 pages, they should be able to peruse it. Um, <laughs> so that's all, I, I don't know about the iterations and, and I don't know. I, I, agree I, with I, Sorry. I can post the final one from here. That's, that's, that's absolutely possible. That's my plan. I agree with Maria that after tonight, we should have something, even, you know, even though the, the current iteration has some minor corrections, I think it, it's so complete that it'll be valuable to folks who want to read ahead a little bit, um, and I hope they do, because there's a lot here, and as we're about to turn to uh, Richard and, and talk about what subset he can actually get through in like a 20 minute presentation. Right. Um, and really, it's really about where we are now. Um, there's a term of art in architecture called, or at least one of my form partners used it called you know the making of the sausage there's there's a certain amount of iterative work that that there really isn't a lot of to me a lot of value in having to post them when when you're getting the goal is to get towards what we have now um, and that represents the body of the work and so I would say let the iterative pieces go okay great or do you want to sure keep going sure so uh, this uh, copy obviously says final draft on it uh, we were able to incorporate everyone's comments that were made on this document up until um, the ninth early this week. I think the last comments we received, I believe they were from Heather, and those have not been incorporated. Was it last week? No, 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 no. I just I was the last one. Sorry, oh. the last. Well, congratulations. That's fine. <laughs> right. I was, right. I was so last that I didn't think any. <laughs> so. so that's why this version has these pink tags on them because we will incorporate Heather's comments in the version that we deliver. So you can see this is already been marked up with, with Heather's comments. So that will be taken care of. So we're going to take out the word draft. It will just say Fort River Elementary School Feasibility Study, and it will have Tuesday's date, right, September 15th. In going through this, I was chagrined to see that there are no credits here. We need to make sure that we indicate who participated in this process, such as all members of the building committee. I'm going to look to you, Jonathan, to yes. give you that list of names. Yes, there are a few people who are no longer here that were certainly participants early on. Yeah, I want to make sure we put them in here. And yeah. Traditionally, one would also include the superintendent of schools, yeah. as well uh, as well as um, my firm and all the consultants that were engaged in this process. Current and past membership is on the website. website. Okay. So, we want from there. But I, I will commit Richard to looking at the website and making sure that okay. there's like no person that accidentally got forgotten. Okay. So that will be done as well. I'm going to talk about the PowerPoint draft in a minute, um, but I, this is a really good report. I, just as a reminder, and maybe I will tell. Uh, the school committee that this report is done in a format that is consistent with the MSBA studies. That's why we have labels for each section called Section 1, Introduction, Section 2, Educational Program, and so on. That's exactly what the MSBA expects. Now, this is not an MSBA project, but I think it would be a benefit to the town in the future to find similar kinds of things here. So I can explain that. That's the reason for it. Um, so that there are seven sections plus appendices. Uh, the appendices include things like the, the zero energy bylaw, the geotechnical report that was done by consultants, the accessibility investigation, cost estimates, two cost estimates that were reconciled and have been reconciled in this document. Um, the response from Massachusetts Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Department, site surveys in here, indoor air quality reports that were done, or in the appendix, uh, the roof report, uh, and the, the MSBA total project budget worksheet, which is the standard worksheet that the MSBA uses to calculate eligible reimbursement. 
there are, after looking through this document, I believe that there are some diagrams that may be useful in the PowerPoint. Um, for example, there is. Um, that are not currently in the draft. In the, that are not in this draft PowerPoint, but it might be useful. Such as um, uh, the, the site map that I think is much clearer. Uh, when it comes to the wetlands boundary and uh, Fort River watercourse. That's not a new diagram, so I will incorporate that. You incorporate, so you will incorporate the flood map, the new flood map? It's the flood map that we yeah. show here. It's on page 63 of this report. Rotate this picture so it aligns with all these buffs over there. Yep, so the north is up. Yes. Yeah, do that. Yep. So it's easier. Yeah, 15, 15 to 20 minutes presentation, and then the assumption was that the committee and the council would have lots of questions. Yeah. So the item obviously is intended to go 45 minutes to an hour or something. Okay. Uh, more like an hour, yeah. Okay. Um, so, but we want to think tonight about so the challenge the presentation. Is, yeah, it's like 32 slides or something or something. I, I thought I did nice when I reviewed the presentation. It's like 32 slides. Yep. That's obviously way too many. Yeah. Uh, nice. They're really good though. I like. Um, well, Maria had some very, very good comments, uh, and we're going to drop some slides. Now, I did. We did get the comments from Maria. You made, You said that you sent comments on the PowerPoint as well. I think they were attached to some of the comments to, of Maria, but they were on the side. They were on the side. They were not written. They were as comments, but okay. there were some idea. Just to orient us, the, the printout we have here, all the markups are Maria's. Yes. That is my handwriting. Yes. Good luck. <laughs> That's why all of our copies have your right markups on it. That's so cool. Yes, I, I thought that would be a good way to do it rather than. We should just show those. <laughs> <laughs> we could. We could show that. But I thought I would bring that. It was just the quickest way for us to uh, incorporate her comments and then we could discuss yes or no. Are you, are you moving to the presentation now? I'm not quite. Okay. I have a feeling you weren't. <laughs> um, there's, a, there's a diagram in here that talks about um, different mechanical systems. You won't see that in the PowerPoint, but we're going to incorporate that diagram as well, that chart. this, I saw that the um, this building committee was formed two years ago. Yeah. Not quite. You're very, very, very close. And your point is what? <laughs> well, I don't think that people realize the amount of effort yeah. that you put into this. Well, we did. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to say that to everybody. There yeah. may be some new people in the audience and on those boards that aren't aware of that. This was not a casual study. Um, so, <laughs> So That's why you're bringing copies of this, right? So you're going to be like, this is not a casual study. <laughs> so anyway, that calendar of events and meetings is also in this, in this slide. So let's, let's refer to this draft PowerPoint. And I'm sorry, the page, page numbers may be a little scrambled because we, we may have shuffled some pages her um, recommendation. So they're in the order that she had recommended, although the numbers were not 
uh, changed. So the first slide is this slide, this orientation of the project, uh, the existing site, existing building. Um, and basically what I, the message is, is that it took several months of work. We had a number of consultants looking at the existing building. I think what I've said before is that you can see the configuration of the building. It's a one-story building. It has these little courtyards, uh, these holes in the roof, um, and that the goal of the study was to examine the various options for improvements to <coughs> Fort River School, <coughs> the expansion or just renovation or some combination. And, and in doing that, try to address two questions those two questions that are on the slide. So a brief orientation about this. And this is where I think we'll add that slide about the map. And, um, so we'll, we'll talk about Fort River, we'll talk about the floodplain, and we'll talk about how additions can be built here without encroaching on the floodplain. This page, uh, Maria is suggesting that we drop it. I don't have a problem dropping it, but maybe here we talk about all of the studies that were done and make reference to this report. There were a number of air quality studies, the roof study, the geotech report, all of that information that can be found in here. I will have a chart here that explains how many studies that were done. That was part of this effort. That's a question there. I guess one question I have is, I mean, I don't mind if at all, if there's a different enumeration of the things we studied, but I guess my question would be, um, if your analysis is showing that uh, there are a number of existing conditions that would lead one to want to substantially renovate the building, is that captured anywhere else in the PowerPoint? Option F, you mean? Or what is motivating? No, this? no, no, what, no. What is motivating? No, what I'm saying, is, why are we no, what I'm saying is, this is a statement. This is a sort of an enumeration of a bunch of reasons why somebody would look at the building and say, "Well, whatever we do, we know we're going to need to do a lot of work, yeah. right? Yeah. Essentially, and it's detailing some of those things." And I'm just saying, you, page nine. That's, so that's why I asked the question. In case, yes, yeah, so the non-negotiables. That is true. There is a lot of overlap between that and the non-negotiables. Which page is that on? Page eight. Labeled as eight may not be chronologically. Well, yeah, but that's actually slightly different. I mean, they, these are the non-negotiables, but it's also. I'm also, I guess, what I'm saying is, is that if if you, I guess, what I'm just saying is, if maybe this is more said than said than written, is that if in your view, your conclusion is you can understand why uh, the town and the school district were interested and looking deeper into the building, because whether we re rehab it, do an addition or new construction, there are a significant number of sufficient existing conditions to warrant that work. And here you enumerate that, and it's, that's not enumerated elsewhere, especially because the non-negotiables are more about the adequacy of the building design rather than its condition. Awesome. Yeah, I, I agree with Eric that I think it's important that a summary of what was found in all the reports is presented rather than just saying, if you want to know what we found, read all these reports. I feel like that's kind of, that's not, I mean, some people, the only thing they're ever going to see is this. And I think it's important that, and, and, and since we have it, uh, that we list the things that we're seeing and discovered in the reports. Yeah, I think does this audience, is this audience, will they be unfamiliar with? Well, there's really, in a way, multiple audiences. We are presenting to the school committee and the town council, but in truth, we're also presenting to the public. Yeah. And so, while we want to make sure the town council and the school committee um, hear and understand as best they can in 20 minutes, the you know the outcomes of this study, we will also want to do our best to make sure the public is confused, um, you know, add as much clarity as we can. Maria. So I'm gonna say no because um, um, uh, I don't think there's any doubt I mean this has been discussed 
yeah. uh, in many different forms and many different ways why we're doing the study. I, think, I don't think there's anybody that's confused about that. And the work of the committee was to, you know, it's just that, that was the lead up to it. And then what we're saying in the very short amount of time that we have is that's, that's been done, that's there, but we want to tell you what we did. And what we did was to do all of these analyses and, and produce these options and did this. And it, so it's, it's more the work of our committee. And there's just, I mean, if, I, if we spend, you, I don't think you can do that and not spend several minutes there. And I don't think it's several minutes that we have. Well, let's do this. Let's, I'm hearing some disagreement on the topic of this slide. Let's continue on and return to it and see if some of the concerns that some have with deleting entirely can, can be okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, corrected. Arena? I have suggestions. Many times when you do presentations, you have slides that you don't show, but you have them because you know there's going to be a question. Right, it's kind of at the back yeah. of the pack. Yeah. Yeah. It goes at the back of the yeah. pack. So if, if you have the, somebody comes and asks a question, okay, this is what we identified, but not. Again, if it's a 20 minute presentation plus question, this is going to come up in a question. Right, that, that is probably true. <laughs> so then, if they, if they want to, we can say, yeah, yeah, we identified this, it's here, this is the report. Okay. That's a Great. And we've also set this up by what are our two things we were set out to do? Is the site buildable and what are the options? Right. So the slides should really focus on those things. Right. I, I like this idea of putting it in the back. Okay. okay. So uh, for the time being, I'm going to bend the corner of this page. I saw it the same thing. And we can revisit it, but it certainly can be a resource slide. Right. Should the question come up. Okay. We're on the next slide. Existing conditions slide. Shows a few pictures of the existing building, the floor plan of the existing building. Um, talks about inadequate classroom sizes. Uh, Maria's suggesting that we that also that could be a resource slide, the same way we did the other so slide. I'm, I'm just going to, I don't actually care if these slides are in there. I don't care if the previous one or this one's in it. I don't actually care if it goes through the reports. Um, what I'm actually saying is when you do your presentation, if you allied from here's what we chose to do, the site is buildable, and then you immediately go into, oh, and here are our options for building. And you, and because we did actually, when we go through the enumeration of reports, a lot of the reports had to do with looking at the the soundness of the building, the soundness of the site, and all that kind of stuff. So in fact, existing building conditions was a major part of the work that we sponsored. Yep. And and I, I think I think it's, I don't, I mean, so I guess what I'm asking you, I don't really care about the slides, but I'm asking you because I think putting them in the back as resources are fine. What I'm asking you is, what will you talk about? Will you talk about the fact that you're familiar with these buildings and that you've looked through these resources and you know the open classrooms a model that everyone's moving away from? Yes. Are, you know, which is what is on that. I mean, and my point is, when we talk about having 20 minutes to talk, I'm not saying you write four paragraphs and you speak for five minutes on a subject. I'm asking if any sentence is going to come out of your mouth that expresses these sentiments. Yes. I think that's absolutely critical. To summarize what I found in this yeah. facility, as an architect who's done this many times, and I can report to you that right. educationally there are some serious deficiencies, Cause, yeah, cause, mechanically, et cetera, environmentally. Right, and because even though even though we have, I mean, this is, the, I mean, forgive me for saying this, but in, in past projects that have been proposed in this town, people have argued about the basic underlying fact pattern, not just about the proposed alternatives. And so the idea that we've just gone through a study that evaluates the underlying fact patterns of the, of the building conditions, and at the end of that process, we're not actually gonna to speak to it at all, makes no gosh darn sense. And so, I, again, what I'm saying is, it doesn't need to be belabored. It could just be a couple sentences. Yep, understood. I think that's part of the reason why, and, you know, putting yeah. what we did. Yeah, 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 and it can yeah. be, it can be discussed in terms of what's on the slide. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Compromise be said leave in the slide on option F, which sort of touches on if you're just fixing the existing building, you're, no, you're, you're crumbling. Okay, okay. No. Yeah, I think that Jonathan's idea of going through and then and, yeah, let's, and looking at that makes okay. sense. Yeah. Let's, let's make our way through and we can, we can <laughs> turn. All right. 
Okay. Um, and the slide in the future won't have the word draft on it. Um, but in this slide, which is the educational space used, there is uh, information that is <coughs> correct that 84,000 should be 85,000 because that's in fact what the option range was. And the range was from 70,000 to 85,000, so that should be corrected. And I'm going to take out the bottom line here, MSBA guideline adjusted, that's completely irrelevant. The MSBA guideline is the 72, 742. The next three lines are just an explanation why the square footage has to be larger factors such as the Amherst classroom guidelines, such as the special ed requirements, such as the pre-K ed support area. Those square footage just add on to the MSBA guideline, which is why we're at 85,000 square feet. Can I suggest, it's a, this is maybe a grammatical thing. When I read pre-K administration and support, the support is not just for the pre-K, it's support for the whole school. No, it's additional support. That's for pre-K. Sure, I thought it was because in the description on the report is because we have an extra parent room, we have an extra parent room, an extra, there are a couple of other administration things that they were not pre-K, but they were for the school. I can look at the, which section on the space description. Uh, you know, on, the, on the tabulation of spaces? No, I, I, can, I can look for it, but I think it's because if not, if I read it like this, it means that it's the 1700 is just for the pre-K and support. And I think the pre-K administration was 300 square footage, square feet plan, but there was an extra, the school had asked for more things that are not typical on an MSBA program. Uh, I'm going to find it. Okay. Okay. So while Ewan is doing that, we can continue. So this, this page will be corrected. Um, the next page, which is the educational space needs, um, this is a tally of spaces, but we can drop that certainly. You know, I can just mention the fact that the report has a draft educational spec. By the way, it says draft on it, and I believe. Uh, Heather, I think it was your comment to suggest taking the word draft out of that section. Um, so that that's this the word draft on the educational spec specifically. Yeah. It's, Watermarked. Yeah. yeah. What is the, or an explanation of why it, well, yeah. So it confused me. So very early on, we said, what do you want to include in the building? And I said, typically we ask the school administration to prepare an ed spec. They, yeah, and Michael said that he could do that and what he was going to do was modify the previous ed spec that was done for the previous project. We put draft on it. I don't think that that ed spec went through a, pro a full vetting process and endorsed by the school board, by the school committee. I in, think in a way that would be compatible with a, with a project that was actually, since our, were kind of unique in our structure. It, yeah. it, it stopped at a certain point. Yeah, so if, let's say if this were an MSBA project, it would be uh, an ed spec that would be endorsed by the school committee, approved by the school committee, and then folded into the documentation. No such process happened. It was Michael's best attempt at defining spaces necessary for this population. So your argument about leaving draft on there yeah. is essentially you want to clarify for any future reader that they shouldn't confuse this with an official statement of the school department. Correct. Right. Or, or think that they can take this and yeah. build a school for it. <laughs> well, either way. Right. It's, it's, yeah. it's fine with me. Yeah. Can, can you add that language like immediately preceding the report? It seemed like there was a little introduction blurb in the report that that kind of information could go okay. there. Explain the draft. Because I think that's really helpful information to Sensible. Know. Yeah. And, oh my God. and reinforcing it with the big draft makes sense. <laughs> you better hope that that's recording. That's all I have to say. Irina, do you so have So I have two comments. One, a slide like this, in, nobody's going to be able to read. Yes, I, think, yeah, yeah, yes. I don't think there's any disagreement about taking the. Oh, okay. The, yeah. And yeah. then it's, 
in page, so just after, it's on page 38 on the description of the space, for example, on administration and guidance says, um, just for administration, we exceed by 1148 square footage, but the pre grade coordination office is only 300 square feet. You have other things like a teacher's workroom, 300 feet, parent room, 100 square feet, 150 second guidance office. Um, so the extra space is not just because of the pre k it's because there is a maker space that is not included, there is second guidance office, parent room, teacher's workroom. So can we say pre k spaces? No, that all these are not pre k spaces, that's what I'm saying. The 1700 is not pre k spaces. It's not just a classroom. I think what I hear Irina saying, correct me if I'm it should be is that, that the support, some of that might actually be pre-K support space, but it's also just general support space. Yes. So beyond the... Beyond the, the pre-K. It's because the, it's an extra... When we were, when they were discussing the spaces with the school officials, they were asking for an extra guidance office, a parent room, a teacher work room. I need to verify that because in the book there is a there is a chart, an MSBA worksheet. Yeah. I want to make sure that that's correct. Okay. Um, and not just reflect that in that narrative. Yeah. Okay. Maybe the errors there are not here. I don't see that number exactly, so what I'm going to do is verify what that is. Yeah. I okay. think it's these things. I can add up page 37. You think it's page 37? Yes. Okay. The question I have about that is just you're saying that, it, that what 37 says is it's only 300 square feet for a pre K administration. Yes. But what about? Pre-K just in general, is it pre-K and yes. add on onto this? So would we be talking yes. the classrooms too? Yes. Yes. So yes. But the yes. classrooms it would be more than this. Because the classrooms are nine hundred over nine hundred square feet. So okay. yes. So this I think I'm so pretty we sure. To verify the number. Yeah, yeah yes. I guess what I would say is since we, we since it's not quite clear what whether this number is correct, just ask that you between now and Tuesday yeah. make sure that because it's I think it's, the label is clear. I think it's pre-K administration and school support. But it should be divided into two separate lines. Yes, yeah, so it's pre-K administration and extra support requested by the school. Extra, yeah. yeah. You, oh, so you think that should be two lines? Yes. One is part is the pre-K and one is the extra second guidance office, the pair room, and so things that are not. Additional support spaces. Yes. Yeah, but the but the right thing to do is, is, is you know, check the yeah, yeah, ask the CSPP to go back and just kind of yeah. affirm it, yeah. whatever it truly is, to make it clear. Okay. Just to check off another thing, if we can get that done as we go along. For the educational program, um, it does say the following educational program draft is originally developed for a previous el proposed elementary school in Amherst and has been amended by the superintendent's office for use in this study. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go. So, 
office, the pre-k coordination, and the maker space, you have an 1800 square footage. Okay. Yeah. So then that means the charge is missing the actual classrooms for pre-k? Some, something's amiss, yes. Yeah, something's up. So yeah. anyway. Okay. Okay, we'll correct it. Funny thing is that's an old, that's an old favorite slide. Yeah. It's been kicking around yeah. for yeah, months. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I have, a, I have a feeling that might be part of the problem. Is yeah. it's, uh, yeah, that it's an oldie but goodie that needs to be updated. Yeah, right. It still does its job, but we want it to be right. right. Let's oh, make sorry. sure. Let's Heather, make sure uh, it's correct. Just back to the, the what Maria just read off. Um, if you could add the information about the, the typical process that a program like this would go through and be approved, I think that would be a helpful addition to that information. Like, why, why isn't it just the superintendent gets to say? And, you know, I think it helps explain how this is separate from a typical MSBA study. And that it, we're hoping, and that would be a step, should we move this forward, this program would have to be right. voted. We can't just move this education program forward as it stands here. Correct. Because it would need to be approved by a school committee. That's correct. So the cool thing is, when you turn the page, we've already agreed to go to the next slide. Yes, I know. <laughs> I, keep, I keep doing that. So it's, we got, we got rid of the, it makes, it makes, it makes us feel productive. This one deleted. Yeah, that one's deleted. Again, hold on to it in case somebody has a question. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think it's funny. Okay. Anyone has any concerns with the following slide, which is the oh. of our old, another great old. Hard to explain it if you don't have that. Yeah. The non negotiables, yep, that's fine. Uh, the next slide shows the. Oops, sorry. Can I raise one question about that? I just yeah. noticed in, when we got into the discussion of the problems that the issue of security control and surveillance was that something that was in our design non negotiables or not? You mean meeting kind of modern school security? Yeah, or is that just assumed? That, since we, I, I have to say it was kind of assumed. Okay. Um, then we've got a big enough Yeah. Okay. I think though, you know, it doesn't hurt for Richard to to, you know, re hit that nail on the head that, you know, somewhere in this conversation to note that, that what we have in two schools is really way behind the times when it comes to just basic entry security. Right. Three really. Actually right? four, four or five. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll <laughs> yeah. to be honest with you, I'm not against special I'm not against you throwing that in to the non negotiables. If it's easy to if it's easy to do and if it's yeah. not easy to do, don't. Yes. Yeah. Um, not coming up someplace since, else. Since, No, but the reason I say that is because that's actually relevant to how you conceptualized it some is. of the renovation ones. It it's is. very relevant yeah, to how relevant. you conceptualize the renovation ones. It is. So so it's important to actually make the point that you because also if I were sitting there on the council and I was just coming to the subject, I'd be like, Well, did you did you think about the security issues when right. you renovated it? The answer is we did think about them and they're incorporated into the cost. It absolutely. I recommend I, look, wait, wait, look, no, no. And We've been sitting there. <laughs> I'm a, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> He's playing will, a role right now. <laughs> I will add security as a bullet point. Okay. I have this feeling that it, was, it comes out in another slide, too. So, um, because then again, I've sat through a number of these things, so I'm kind of used to hearing it. So, you never know. Um, Right, design right. options. Design options. All there. A through F. Uh, Maria suggesting add a slide after this of the HVAC options studied. So this is this is the slide that I just yeah. referred to here, the HVAC, to explain that uh, HVAC was a big factor right. in evaluating the whole matrix of the group of options. Yeah. Um, <coughs> Maybe this is obvious, but when I read this existing smaller gym note on the two, it flashed through my mind, wait, are we doing this to re deal with the existing smaller gym or are we retaining the existing smaller gym? And I wonder if for the for people who hadn't been involved, 
just putting the word retain yep. on top of each of those. Yeah. yeah. So it's clear what you're getting, sort of, because that seems to be a main a point about these two, which is, could be a drawback to. Yeah, and as you can see, there's a difference in square footage. So. But I think we retain, but at the same time, we expand it a little bit. Do we? I didn't remember. Well, we incorporated some of the storage areas into the G in, in, in these options. But does the gym itself get larger? No. No, for the gym, the, I think we put a balcony with mechanicals yeah. in one no, of them. No, we put the bleachers, the, 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 there would be space of, for bleachers or the storage I'm behind. Sorry. So the, the, the space behind the columns was incorporated into the gym area as usable space for the gym. And, uh, but those are, those are, those are uh, supporting kinds of elements. Yeah. The gym, the play area of the gym stage, which was the point. Yeah. And even with that addition, it still doesn't meet MSDA yeah. guidelines for a gym. So, right. you can say mostly retained to this <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's near existing form. I, I, I think just, I, I guess, guess I would advocate, I think it's okay just to add yeah. retaining. Um, Richard could talk to that. We can, okay. you know, if a question comes up, it can be explained. Um, it's one of those things. These, these are going to be on a, you know, well, actually, it's a much bigger screen than that. But, but nonetheless, a lot of text. Doesn't okay. Okay. Yeah, add that slide afterward. Yep. The sustainability and net zero, that's pretty clear. It just says that if you do it, you get, there's a there's an additional benefit, there's an additional reimbursement. This this net zero slide will be deleted. Okay. I can really like keep it at the back. Well, I, before we delete it, can I can I ask a question? Yep. Um, when I looked at the numbers here again, for some reason, it struck me. If you go to a target goal of sixty to seventy percent energy savings, and you work off the eighty-four point four number, you get a KBTU, an EUI of twenty-five point three to thirty-three point seventy-six as the target. And I'm wondering. I, I don't think we can address this exactly now. That I want to come back to the issue in a different form. But it, am I reading that correctly? That that the 84.4 would be more or less the school built to ordinary code at yes. this point. Yeah. So when I put that, if we were retaining the slide, I would want to have a bracketed note that that meant an EUI of 25.3 to 33.76 because that's a significant piece of information that we're, we're sort of missing the mark if we go 50. Either. And it references other. Yeah. That. So I, I'm, I'm fine, I guess, because I, I, we're going to come back to the energy issue in a different form if this is deleted. But, um, well, I'll leave it down. Really? So maybe, because this, that diagram shows up later. It when does. we're talking about the, uh, option yeah. A and option uh, option A UI 50, option A UI 30, so maybe because, you know you're right. I, honestly, it's been a long time. I haven't even read that what was on the the y-axis there. But maybe if put parenthetically, if that's if it is true, this is a UI 50 and this is a UI approximately 30 to give people an idea. Is is that what you're? I would recommend true. we take out goal 60 to 70 yeah. percent. <laughs> because so for, like, yeah. for people like you, who will do the numbers, they just they're, they're got puzzled. So I think it's better not to show that number and just indicate that we did the study based upon an EUI of 50 or 30, right. which and then talk about the relative merits of that, that we would rather right. be right. at the, the cost of getting to the, the yeah. weeds of it. And, yeah. and I, I, I honestly think it's going to go, I don't want to say this point this way, but I think it's, it's going to be too deep a topic. Okay, so the bigger point of deleting this, because I've, I've forgotten this diagram sort of resurfaces later in microscopic form. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's fine with me. But it's not, I mean, the, it's very, I, that, that's visual. visual. It's, yeah, and getting I, rid of the words. 
it's good. It's weirdly like keeping the lines is good. It's weirdly easy to understand when it's less legible. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, you know, we're trying to go down. I, 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 uh, um, so I guess my my question is is since we're deleting a, a few of the slides after this, which I'm not really have a problem with. Um, you're teasing people in the previous slide mm. about sustainability net zero. You're only mentioning the fact that it provides you a financial benefit, yeah. and then you're making them wait like another 15 slides before you get to the punchline around how you're approaching it and what you're doing. And I'm just trying to figure out, are these the things all in the right place? Yeah. Should this slide, if you're gonna do that, should this slide on sustainability net zero be put later or you know, with the other slides? Or, or when you're talking about it, what are you going to say to help people understand that we looked at it. if you just wait 10 more minutes, you'll be learn an awful lot more about sustainability at zero. And I'm saying this because, and Maria knows this from the JCPC meeting last week, this is actually a matter of really intense interest by, by members of the town council and others. They're going to be super, super interested in this. You can expect to get a bunch of questions about it. Um, and, and if you're just teased with that, and then you leave them hanging for another 10 minutes, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna be fidgety in their seats. Right. So, um, yeah. I mean, this is my. I was the one that suggested moving it back, and the reason that I suggested putting it to after we're talking about cost is because what if you have it in the front, you're talking about cost before you've even talked about the option. So yeah. it was kind of like, this is what we did. These are all the ways that we looked at handling it. Multiple HVAC systems, multiple energy efficiency systems, you know, all the, these are, this is the variety that we took into account. Here's the actual drawings. And then talk about, go back to EUI. I'm go, sorry, go back to all of those energy efficiency when you're talking about cost, because, because that's where the costs are. Yeah, and actually, yeah. I'm sure I'm gonna just throw, I'm gonna jump to dovetail that thought just two seconds. The, the the other reason why I move this slot this particular this slide yeah. I would move back yeah. uh, and probably by the way I'd actually move it back after those slides on the options and approaches which I think is what you're suggesting is because the, I can tell you already for a fact that what the town is interested in is what are the alternatives to comply with the net zero bylaw um, what are the ranges of options for doing so how do we do it and how and then how much does it cost just in a dollars and cents way. And so the, this, inf this information about here's the reimbursement or bonus you can get from MSBA right. is honestly not on point for what, it, I'm not saying you should delete the slide, yeah. but no. it's, it's same, totally, same not, it's it totally not on point for what people actually care about. What they care about is what would it even look like? How do we visualize and understand complying with this bylaw? What are the options? And then I think it'll be a revelation to some folks that there are different ways you can comply. Like another entire notion yeah. you can comply at EUI 50 or 30 right. will be a learning experience for the for people, and that's a good thing for people right. to learn. Really? But I, well, I don't know if you have something right. to make sure I My suggestion was to move, we start talking about the design, let's keep the design together, and then the energy to move, keep all the design together, and then move it before so. these ones. Yeah. Really? yeah I, I like the idea of moving it back, but I, I actually would like to add a note that the committee uh, expresses no opinion whether EUI 50 is sufficiently energy efficient to meet the requirements of the net zero bylaw. Because I think it's an open question and um, should be explored at the time right. we get to school building committees what the target is, that the, what was the spirit and intent, and what we should be aiming at. And I, I fear this may be used as an expression of our opinion that EUI 50 will suffice. Can I ask a question about this? Is, is this report an expression of our opinion, or is this an expression of your, their professional judgment? I didn't actually think this report, I didn't think this report was an expression of our opinion. But I think what, what Rue's trying to, to, if I could paraphrase you a little bit, I think we wanted to make sure that it doesn't seem like an endorsement of a certain level, yeah. but, which is going to have to, if I, again, ext extrapolate a little bit, to, that will need to be re-looked at as part of a, a right. next process, because the right answer for a next project might be 25, it might be 35, it has to be kind of re How would you approach the answer to that question? That's a good question. <laughs> Well, net zero can be achieved in a variety of ways. And uh, whether you 
uh, EUI 30 or 50 and all of the things that you have to do that cost money, by the way, to achieve EUI 30 or 50 uh, is something that you can explore when you get into the details of a specific project. This shows you ranges. It shows you ranges. And it shows you the initial cost. But our bylaw actually not only requires us to generate the energy that's used, but to create a highly <coughs> energy efficient building. And obviously that's going to be interpreted, that's going to be subject to argument. And I just, I don't want to foreclose, I don't want to imply that we know that that parameter includes 50 EUI um, and that you can therefore just match that with solar panels and you comply with the bylaw. I think it's an open question, and we should leave it. Was there a Heather? specific language in there? Because in the report that you're suggesting we amend at this point, or are you saying for this presentation, there's something in here that you feel like is? Well, when I there. thought this slide would be in here, I thought just a, a footnote or somewhere where the, the 50 EUI is mentioned, and maybe that can be one of the later slides. That there's just an asterisk note that the. Um, the question of whether 50 EUI, I guess I was going to say, whether the committee expresses no opinion to it about it, but if you're right, this is not going to compromise. That the question of whether 50 EUI is sufficiently energy efficient to comply with the, the Amherst bylaw. But that's zero bylaw. Yeah. Well, isn't it implied because we present both the 50 and well, the that, 30? That, that that's we, my issue. You're saying you want to not present the, thir the, fi the 50. I, I, I think it should be left as, a, well, personally, I would say yes, 50 was wrong, but um, that's too big of a question to open at this late date. So I thought a, a good way to express it was to make sure it was seen as an open question, either that we weren't endorsing this necessarily, or that the report had not concluded that 50 EY was sufficiently energy efficient to meet the bylaw. There is language in the report. Are you finding that, Maria, right now, where we said that the something if there's a note like the committee doesn't feel like the 50 is in the spirit of the net zero bylaw because the net zero bylaw says yeah it, it's in there somewhere <laughs> <laughs> I just went well, to this net zero bylaw yeah no it's it's in the narrative yeah um, I'll try to find it if that's in there and then you're that's still that's still standing it's like that's on this slide I'm sitting a little bit um well, that's, I don't want to lose that thread, but at the same time, I, I want to make sure we keep moving forward. And can I ask for the time I might, my watch die? 6.33. 6.33, okay. Eric. Um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of, I don't know. I'm you want gonna, me to close this out? You can close that out, sure. So it, in the path to net zero section, EUI 50, the less innovative of the two, is the base of the range and approximates the A building, which is designed to be current energy codes, but goes no further toward energy reduction. Concern was raised by members of the committee as to whether EUI 50 is sufficient to be considered incorporating highly efficient standards as required by the bylaw. However, there are no specific standards referenced to determine compliance. I feel like that's yeah. okay. in the vein. Yeah, to, me, to, to build on, actually it's funny because that reinforces what I was going to say, is that I don't have any problem. I mean, I think it makes sense actually. You you essentially put forward a proposal. Let me. I'm trying to find the right words to use for a zero net energy building, at least in some in the components that are new construction. Um, I don't. I don't think in that regard you were making a definitive legal judgment right. that the town would find that it complied with the bylaw, right. which are two different statements. Yes, they are two different statements. And that conforms with what's in the report now. Okay. So, for the purposes of the presentation, <laughs> for the purposes of the presentation, what I heard was moving this this slide further back. Oh yeah. Yeah. And so that would leave us at uh, the pretty eight. pictures. Yes, starting to get the pretty pictures. I don't think we commented yet on the notion of deleting F, but personally, I'm okay with deleting F. Maybe just leaving it as a resource. Yeah, it's weedy. Yeah, yeah. Final presentation. Yeah. I, I agree. Okay. Disagree. 
Okay. So we jump right to 100% new yep. and what that means, what that looks like, what the ratio of square footage is, where it goes, and then we explain option B. I, I have a comment. So again, this drawing is UI 50. I don't know if you have to clarify because of the amount of solar panels. It's option A, UI 50. Do we need to clarify that or not? Because or just, all the solar panels are here. Or maybe just uh, we wish to draw your attention to the building itself. Yes. Or yeah, I mean, um, yeah. you can delete right? them all. Yeah. But, I mean, we have another diagram to talk about solar panels. Yeah, yeah. No, but somebody might, I don't know if somebody's going to ask what's all the solar panels. I think if someone asks, we can we can reference or Richard. I think, okay. I think the point is that yeah. this is a, this illustrates the strategy for how to replace okay. the building on the site. Yeah, okay. not address energy. You do it with a two-story building south of the existing footprint. That's the point of the illustration. Okay. Okay. Option B is less of an addition, some demolition of existing rental. <coughs> Option C is building it on the north side, doing more renovation. Option D is two additions. You've heard all this before. During the presentation, I'll spend a little more time explaining it. And then option E is a very small addition to build basically a pre-K area with a separate pre-K entry. Post the holes. Post the holes. And, and create Right, and create a courtyard. Right. Works and holes. Okay. So this now talks about duration of construction, the number of months that it would take. Points out that options E and F. Option E requires temporary classrooms or swing space. No. Oh, sorry. Swing space, not classrooms. I'm sorry, swing space, but not classrooms. Yes. Correct. And I think, you know, we, we've all looked at this many, many times, but for some folks, the, the notion that the project could actually vary between 22 months and 36 months will, will come as a kind of interesting revelation. I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's a big difference. It's somewhat counterintuitive that the new build where you're doing the whole building is not to me but right. but to I think the lay audience that that's the shortest time frame and then will you mention why it sprawls out in time as you get into more complicated renovation sure I, I just I can talk about brief, that briefly uh, how you have to take chunks of the building at a time while keeping the rest of it safe you end up with redundant systems, extra means of egress. You can't, you can't start banging the whole thing out at once, which is the most efficient way to portray this to work. And the and the other thing I would, I would you know, whether it comes out in a question or, or in your narrative, you know, the notion that you can build the, the new building in its entirety effectively while still continuing to use the existing facility is is, is, is an important piece of information. Yeah. Okay. So the next um, slide, Maria pointed out that the figures are wrong, so that can be corrected. It should be 63.1 million dollars. But also, you are asking that the square footage cost. It, uh, I liked it in the report. We had talked about this, and that was one of the modifications that we made for the, for the home. Yeah. Um, and I thought that that was helpful. And I think some people think in terms of cost per square foot and it kind it, it didn't show up kind of anywhere else um, in the presentation so I thought this might be a good place to put it okay um, I just took it from the here <laughs> Did you have so, yeah, I, I know we've gone back and forth about this a zillion times but the the fact that we wouldn't do option A as a CM procurement, I think, gives a, when this is going to be the first time we get a sort of comparison of all of them, I would be inclined to put the GC price 
in action A. Okay, just highlight that as GC. Well, yeah, because that's, that's, that's how you do it. Yeah. yeah. The header or says put it down below in a parenthesis. Wait, no, I was. Well, someone said. Do we have? Am I missing it? Or, or I mean, you do end? talk about it, there, there's a, a actually a couple slides I talked about you. the procurement, but I think maybe you could say. It, you're going to come back to A and yeah. talk about different, you know, that. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's. Yeah, it's, I, I it's, would rather give everybody the CM number. Okay. And just say, here's how they compare apples to apples using the same method of delivery. A little bit later, we'll talk about the be an additional benefit to going with option A, which is the possibility of going to a GC number. But Great. this is going to be the first impression on the class. Right. Yeah. And people are going to go, oh my God, you're building $8 million more than the nearest one instead of two, two something mm -hmm. million more, mm -hmm. the way we would actually build it. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I understand the logic of keeping, and we have gone back and forth. Yeah. Can you slash here? I can and say right. <laughs> yes, I can, I can reformat this slide and add a figure below. But asterisk. Yeah, with an asterisk. Yeah. Asterisk. And say, we'll talk about this in a little bit, but, it, you know, so that it's, so it's there. Yep. And also have, I mean, it, that can have the square foot um, number associated, which is, I think, 534. Yeah, so, in my opinion, anyone that knows the difference between CM at risk and GC will know to either look or to ask the question. So I would default to Rudy's position of presenting the more real numbers. And we can go into go into the method if, if asked, but I don't want to be able to show the CM for A. I, I would. I think you can. So, Eric? So my question, like, speaking of whether we have to or not, uh, no, I just mean like, I'm not being funny about it. What are we trying to convey with this slide? Yeah. That's what information yeah. do we want people to get out of it? That there's a range of cost estimates associated. Well, you, you can make different choices of how you approach it, and those different choices have different costs. I'm kind of asking for actually. <laughs> so, I mean, you're the one who's going to be answering. To, I mean, it's not sure to stop Sorry, talking. I'm just saying, like, you're going to be telling people what this slide means when you stand right. in front of them. And I'm, I'm just not sure what you're trying to convey to people, because unless you're teaching people about CM construct, construction manager methods um, versus general contractor, unless, the, unless you're trying to convey something interesting about that method, it seems to me what most people are going to do when they look at this is they're going to do what Rudy said, and they're going to say, oh, apparently this is where we find out like a big unveil of what we think the range of costs might be for the for the project. And, and But then we're immediately going to say, so you should look at this, but by the way, I'm going to, I'm going to modify this yeah. later, but later I'm not actually going to show you another slide that shows you the modifications. So you can actually compare all in one place what's going on. Okay. Well, yeah, but, but I'm actually, but actually, I didn't really answer the question. I'm actually serious. What are you trying to get people to get? What I'm get trying to get time? at here is that my recommendation for all of the options except A, you should do using the CM method. Okay. Because the CM will allow you to phase it safely, work with the educators who are, have to live in this building right. to accommodate their testing schedule temporary measures, dust controls, etc. you need a CM sure. present on the site. Okay. A doesn't tamper with the existing school days and the activities of the school. It can be handled using a GC method. So my recommendation yeah. is A, you do the GC method. So, then why don't, the so question. my question, but Richard then, my question is why don't you modify the slide to say CM method for all except A, and under A say GC method, and when you describe to people why you're doing it, you can explain to them why you can why you recommend one method for one and the other for the others, or you can even put it in a footnote in the bottom to explain to people why you're choosing to do this. But then all the information is conveyed at the same time. Maria, I highly disagree because I, I think you have to have it there because we are not making those decisions, and in the future, for whatever reason, they. We could, the town, whoever is, could decide to go with a CM method or a GC method. So it's we're not saying that this would be GC method. Yeah. We're saying that you could do GC method, and the advantage to that is you would save ten percent. The disadvantage is that you lose some. I mean, while you there may not be as much to gain from a contract manager, construction manager at risk, 
you could make that decision. You could. So I, I think it's, I think it's got to be part of it, and th there's going to be a whole big thing coming up about the, you know, the, about what benefits you get from doing um, general contractor. So I think you got to leave it there, and then, it, not to mention at the top. It's the same yeah, maybe um, so. Maybe that my, be uh, maybe my uh, enthusiasm for GC in certain scenarios was inappropriate. I do think GC is, and maybe I shouldn't. I shouldn't make that kind of a strong recommendation. Maybe I should say there are, there are a lot of reasons why I have seen towns go with the CM method. It's a discussion by the town later. I will tell you from my experience, the GC method could save you money. And it's a discussion that should be had by the town at the appropriate time. Uh, Heather and then Anthony. I, I believe you could make it clear on this slide by providing both of those pieces of information on this slide. I don't. I think you can keep the the CN method at the 63.1, and then in parentheses below it, yeah. you know, um, GC method this cost, which would be appropriate for option A only, or most likely option method. Right. Because yeah. I think it gets all. Well, let, let me do it that way. I, I, I'm, I don't, I don't want to strongly push the GC. It's really a bigger question that the town will need to grapple with later. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I'd like to strongly push the GC, but if we are, in fact, feeling out of an abundance of caution that we shouldn't, then we should have, shouldn't we have one slide like this for CM and an identical slide for GC? No, because you wouldn't do GC for the... But you wouldn't do CM for this. But that wouldn't be his recommendation. Well, it's his recommendation that we do GC for... Look, that's why we've got the, the case studies and the three options to talk about that. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Yes. Are people comfortable with what Heather just suggested? Yes. Yeah. No, I mean seriously. Yes. Because yes. if people are, let's move on. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Can I suggest that we move this slide then, uh, following it? Because it gets into uh, GC, the reimbursement rate, or is that taking us down a path we're not ready for you? I would defer to Richard because this is really his his presentation yeah. is kind of making the, his kind of maybe, story. Maybe maybe jumping to reimbursement is wrong, but I just I just have you know A has excuse me CMGC. I have a question. Shouldn't be this slide be before this one? So this is saying because um, this one. It's okay, but there's uh, multiple methods. Truth is here, we are taking one age back that is most likely not the one that would be recommended, and that's why we have the case studies afterwards. But we are putting some numbers here that do not correspond to maybe the most adequate to, to be designed. Just, as I say, you, we have, you could flash this one and say, okay, we look, then we have numbers for all these combinations. Just for the sake of comparison, these are these are some numbers. But okay, but so I, I, I kind of watched you when you were talking because about HVAC. The HVAC. I think the numbers that I put here are all for H five six. Yes. And actually, that's not what, in principle, would be recommended for all these systems, right? It's only just to be able to compare apples to apples that you put those numbers and I think there was Jesse's thought to put, okay, let's pick H by six for all of them and that's the number that we're gonna be comparing. But in truth, if you were building, it's not that you would do H by six, or there was the suggestion not to do H by six for all the system because some were more adequate than others for each of the options. So my suggestion was to flip the two slides, okay, we look at all these. Mm. But, so, but this is too much information. So okay, let's focus on this, although this might not be the most relevant HVAC system, but just to be able to compare, these are the numbers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think getting back to what Eric said is what's the point of this slide? Yeah. And it's to hold all variables but one mm -hmm. constant. Right. CM. EUI 58 six, 465 students, which you probably should yeah. mention too. Yeah. <laughs> this is yeah. for a certain size school. Um, and to just look at that how 
we developed plans for six different ways to approach it, holding everything else yeah. the same. This is a comparison. We are, we are, you can say in the strongest of terms, we are not, don't focus on these numbers as the be all and end all. There are different ways to approach each of these options, which we're going to talk about because we did case studies and just be emphatic about. This gives don't you the block, broadest don't, range. Don't get yeah. locked in. There's more to this story. Yeah. Keep listening. Right. So <laughs> this, this slide should come beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it shows the full range of things we looked at. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Uh, maybe even highlight. And maybe even highlight, highlight those so that, 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 that they recognize. Right. Right. Yeah. But it's almost yeah. really the point of the message you're conveying. People can understand that there's multiple variables in this right. yeah. that, that we've worked through. And many, then, by the way, many, move many off many the slide yeah. as fast as possible. On this Bef one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Before <laughs> people focus on the details right. and start asking you questions. Yes. Yeah. We, there's a lot of ways to do this. Next. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, we've looked at them. We looked at all these. We focus on this bottom line. Here we go. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, now we're going to describe the Hannes and the same. Three weeks later. Yeah. <laughs> Seems like I'm the contrarian tonight, but I actually, I actually like this slide going first because it gives you a pictorial a reminder of like what is each option. What is the percentage due and the approximate relationship to cost? Are you okay I, I, I I can, really quickly what, with the big one? What I can, what I can do, really right, what I can do is I can drop this stuff out. Just as a quick reminder, we'll get the cost. We'll come back to this slide. Right. But this 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 reminder uh, shows all of the variables that we say. Okay, we're going to pick pick the 465. Right. Option six for mechanical, and then this reappears. Right, right. the numbers. What? This is really micromanaging, but what if these pictures came in here? And as I, I find these easier to graph. Okay, here's what we're doing. The, the, the I, I can do that. And I think this is good. When I look at this on a PowerPoint slide, my eyes are good. If I didn't know anything about this, even we, we don't. That, we don't want people. That's to that's exactly that the point. Yeah. We that's want we point. want people to say, "Oh my God, doesn't that look complex? There's a lot of variables, a lot of stuff to look at." They were thorough. That's actually all they're supposed <laughs> to get. Yeah. A lot of yeah. stuff. Okay. That's right. the intent yeah. of that slide. Yeah. You, that's you the make point. a good point. I can right. take these. If the font could be smaller so that it's not fuzzy <laughs> to anybody <laughs> looking okay. at it. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is our strategy. I'm good with that. If we could just play around. Oh no, no, that just sound. I'm moving the pictures ready. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm conceding and going with this. Put the uh, mind-numbing one first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, then the mind-numbing on movie first. But those pictures will be here. So, I, I have a question. When we yep. say, are we putting these pictures on this yes. or the plans on this? If I had a choice, I would do the pictures. Okay. Okay. I think the okay. pictures are more evocative. People were doing the pictures. Okay, good. I just want to make sure Everywhere. you all knew what we were doing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Got that all, Richard? <laughs> Got it. Good. 655. Okay, 655. We have to leave, but I will have to be done early because I haven't had any dinner. Oh. Just saying. Uh, where are we? We're now on. Now we're back to. So, Richard, about. we're on the net zero yes. premium option A. Yep. <clears throat> No, this that was when it was in a different location. Got it. Yeah. It is now. Oh, it's in the other location. It is yep. now. Yeah, Richard already did that. Okay. The, the big graph thing we moved. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then the percent these ones. Right. Talk about the difference between. So two. this is how net zero manifests itself in yeah. this project. I think this is a good way to manifest. Yeah. Okay. But can I suggest something? Maybe this is too much micromanaging. The picture is huge, the numbers are small. You want to make a huge emphasis on the amount of solar panels or these numbers, maybe? The square foot numbers? No, no, the, the question is the pictures are, it takes two thirds of the slide, the numbers are small, and this uh -huh. picture is not small if you make the actual size smaller. I, I think people need to see the extent of the photovoltaics. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I would agree. I think it's okay that the the images are, are dominant. Um, I don't think there's going to be a time to really get into the. the into well, I thought that was interesting that yeah. it between actually between the two options, the difference in cost is only one. 
you can see that between US 50 and US 30, the actual difference cost is 1.2 million dollars, and though you might think it's much bigger. So that's, I thought, the message between these two, I think, is relevant, yeah. between the US 30 and US 50, that it might, for many people, it's going to be. I think that's something, I think you bring up an important point. I'd say that. Well, that I, I, can say that. I can say that. Yeah. I think it has, I think it has, but that's why I was thinking if you, this was largely to be reinforced and highlighted. Because if not, people just remember the number of solar panels and that's it, but actually the cost difference between the two is quite smaller. This is quite small. Increased font. I got yeah. it. <laughs> so um, I'm going to move forward. You have a, someone else who's not on you. That um, the question of too much info. My answer is I like it. Um, yeah. I, I like it whether you talk through it a ton or not, because again, my my experience with people in town who are going to be at this meeting is this information is something they care deeply about knowing. And in fact, actually, the more we can move off of sort of atmospheric, no pun intended, sort of atmospheric questions around what it means to be you know climate friendly and, and all that more to, so what does it actually mean for us? Because there's a, there's a hunger to understand what does it actually mean for us? And so the fact that there's some details, you don't have to talk to all of them. They can just be there, you can refer to some of them, and then my guess is when you get into Q&A, yep. folks will want you to go back to that slide and say, I want to ask you questions about it. I mean, this okay. that slide. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. So the only reason that I put that, which yeah. I'm fine with that, yeah. um, the next slide kind of has a lot of the same information. Um, so oh, yeah. um, that's, you know, that's, they're presented, a lot of the same information is presented in two different ways in two different slides with not much time to present. So I would leave that to Richard's dis discretion about yeah, I think you how somehow you're combine them. But, but yeah, I think both slides have important, yeah, let me try important to, let me, points across. Let me try to combine them into one slide. That would be good. Yeah. Actually, that would yeah. be good. <clears throat> okay, good. Oops, sorry, Rudy. So, uh, Richard, are you going to take off those details? You, you've talked about stripping the 84 KB to you. And we're back to the, uh, are we, what page? We, are we back on, we're back on the illustrations. So I'm out of order here. Well, I, I am going to strip them off, yes. Okay. And then would it be appropriate to make the point that um, in, the, in the presentation that 50 EUI is not necessarily or that that's an open question? I have a feeling it's going to come up in conversation. Um, but yeah, I'll leave it to Richard as to how, how to kind of work that in. Um, because we're going to, obviously, we're going to talk. He's going to talk to 30 and 50 and, and and give some context to why we as a group were favoring the 30. Heather? Just yeah, when thinking about combining these two slides, it seems like there's kind of two sets of important information here. One is sort of, um, how we live in these buildings, yep. which is a variable, but also um, what can be done in a renovation versus new construction. And that's going to be a big decision right. and having people understand that all the things that you can do in a, in a in new construction are not the same things that you can do for renovation, that there's a difference there in how you go about trying to achieve things. I guess That's kind of why I like the second slide better, just because um, uh, I don't know. I mean, it, it, I mean, you've got the R60 and 15 and 35. If people want to look at that um, it, um, on both slides, which is a lot of what this has. Um, maybe you can. I'll leave it to, to Richard. Maybe no, you can I, just I, talk I, about this: how you use the building and how you build the building. Yeah. So I, as I said, I was going to combine them, but they, they are separate messages. They're very different. Yeah. Messages. I think, but I think you could add another line on this slide for how we live in the building, and then yes. that. That maybe is a thing that goes under both of the renovation and new construction, but I just didn't want to lose that nuance. That 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 is one of the differences. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have something? I yeah. I was actually I was going to echo the point of um, I think Richard, you know what we're trying to get after, and I think and I guess what I would else I guess I don't care honestly if you lean more to the second slide and. Um, modify some of the language and put in new text, as other was suggesting. What I would suggest again, though, is throw the previous slide into the back of the deck again. So if you get, if you start getting more questions about um, net zero and different approaches, that would allow you, if you needed to, you could extrapolate on Rudy's point, 
as well as also then say, well, this is the kind of things that it means. You know what I mean? Yep. So you'd have it there as backup to, to, for the point that it's making. Okay. So okay. make this a resource one. Yeah. yeah. And then change language to the other one is necessary. Or add language. Add language, rather, yeah, yeah. So the other one is necessary. Okay. So now I think we're up to pyramid. So where do you want to add that? Um, big so it says big option A, uh, so it says uh, reduces option A <laughs> to 57 million, and then maybe in parentheses, 465 square, uh, 3K 360. Yeah. Just to remind them, you know, that the number. It would reduce it for no matter how big the enrollment is, but that 57 million refers to that Just size. Just properly label it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Heather, I mean, oh. sorry, Allison. <laughs> Should, is, it seems like this slide might be nice to be put right after that slide where the, the costs are put. You know, mm -hmm. so that you know we're that you're showing that slide and you're saying there's CM and there's DC, and then this next slide is like this explains the difference. I, but I'm not sure. I'm not. I haven't gone back, so I'll see what's right after that slide and see if there's a reason why there's a different slide after the cost. Right there really isn't actually. Yeah. It, go, it goes right the, it goes the net yeah. zero. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it does, it does sort of finish a thought. Yeah, that's just what it seems like. Yeah. So right. this this diagram um, should precede this one. This chart. Okay. It says okay. it has two columns under A, okay. CM and GC, yes. and they have ten percent difference. So that makes sense. Oh right, 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 right. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Right? So. Incentive points are in the wrong place. Do you want to put the, then you want to put the, the incentive points before this one? Okay. The incentive points could come before this one, yes. Okay. Um, the, the slight discrepancies between the GC class given the different charts, like this one says 57 million. The estimated effective reimbursement says the federal project cost under APC is going to be 59.1 million. And I think there's another chart that says 56.8 million. Yeah, on the estimated effective reimbursement. So, there's a number. Really. There should be reconciled. Just yeah. I looked at this and I'm trying to think of what, um, what, because I just noticed that too. Because you, correct, you corrected it to a 50. Number. Thank you, tickets. Also, the, the option A says 65.6, and the 65.6 doesn't show anywhere yeah. else. I don't think I don't think we should try to figure out what yes. the correct yeah, number is. I think we tell we just told Richard to say, just go through one last time yeah. and to be correct. Yeah, because uh, they need to. Here's here's where it is because I circled it. Um, the part at the bottom. It's the HVAC system. That's five versus six. Uh. Right, so that changes it. So that it's that's our case analysis and that's our cost reconciliation, and all of that yeah. stuff. We looked at HVAC five, which gives it's a higher price than that bottom row of right. the enormous table. It's actually fifty nine point one. Just isn't that just going to confuse people? Well, can there is you the potential change these for it. then to the five instead well, of six? Except that we talked it, so much about that initial kind of comparison we did was all around the six, even though you know it wasn't loved. You know, if, if Richard can put it in context, whether it's written or verbal, I think we can do our best to avoid confusion. But there's part of this that I mean, these are all big numbers and there's many of them. It's it's gonna you know it's it's gonna be impossible to not have some people tripped up by the numbers and yeah so I'm a little at a loss as to how to make it perfect. The, the difference between 57, 59 and 60, at the scale. Our variance on our cost reconciliation right. is within five, well, really 10%. Yeah, right. um, you know, it's, and it reinforces that this is a piece of the money study. Yes. 
that these numbers are should be taken. I mean, they're within 10%. I, I, I they're want grounded to, in something. I want people to like go home not. with numbers in their head that are consistent, that are right. correct numbers, not confuse them. I'm, I'm, well, I'm thinking that this is too much. Yes. The additional charts with the different. I think I think the risk I think the risk this goes back to the question we had earlier that I keep mentioning about audience and what are their expectations and it's interesting to me because there's some some things we can get into here around sort of the what did you learn about the building and the site I wouldn't be surprised if some people force you to go through again what does it mean to have a wet site and how do you fix it um, so that that's that's been a softball in town for years. Um, there's really a lot of interest in net zero and what that means and how do you translate it practically. And then I think there's interest in what are the components of change, what are the variables that can make a real difference in price. But I think what Maria said a moment ago, what Maria and Heather both said a moment ago, that when you get down to parsing numbers that move between 57 and 59, there's two issues. One, the question about whether there's the precision you're, you're getting people into in that public setting is not the point of the presentation and is just going to lose people. Yeah. And then also similarly whether at some point people's heads are going to explode and they're not going to they're not going to even remember the question they meant to ask because they feel like they're drowning in numbers and spreadsheets. I, I have to say it too. I think it's really I mean based on the the conversations I've heard around town and in committees I think this what you're about to talk about with the cost is important because there are a number of committees in town that this is exactly what they're going to be talking about: capital projects in town, and what does it mean? And um, and people asked about what what are the reimbursement? How, you know, what are the incentives no, no, for I, green yeah. building? So I think you have to do it. Just orient people no, no, I, to the the variability. I, I agree. With, I agree with that. What I meant was, if we're having a discussion about why a number is 57 or 59 million in a feasibility study. We've missed the entire point of the conversation. That, that's the point I'm making. I'm, I'm not saying you can't have a relevant question about it, but I think the issue is it's better to go through what the fact that there are variables that can affect the pricing up and down. They exist for a variety of reasons. I mean, you can get into specifics, and then you get into reimbursement and other things we can talk about. Yeah, I I I, I agree, and I I really need to bring it down to a number that they will remember. And then that's the number they're going to remember, rather than, and then say that there are variations, but I don't want to confuse you. And there are people in the in the community who are probably going to be wondering what grade fuel oil we're going to be using. Oh, absolutely, and, and, yes. And that's too early to even discuss. Heather, sorry. You know, we you don't know where we are with like a press release, but you know, I think we do sort of all a one-liner about yeah. costs. And that I don't know if that's picking out the very tippy top number of any of these things we've seen, and the very lowest number, and we say that's the range. But um, I think in this presentation, we have to like at some point say this is the huge range. You know, the tippy top number we got was this, but you know, we don't think necessarily that it's it's a range. And I just think we need to orient people, and then all these following numbers are sort of an analysis of where you can land in there. But I do think we do need a one-liner in here that it talks about cost. And I don't know if that, and also then that gets translated into cost to Amherst. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I think those are the two big headlines. That's true, yes. Mm -hmm. What does it cost and what does it cost us? <laughs> yeah. I have a suggestion. Uh, usually tell my students about significant digits. Like, what's your position, right? Do we have 55.3? Is it dif significantly different from 55? Because we know there's uncertainties. I think when you put numbers like 63.1, is telling them like very certain is 63.1 and not 63 and not 63.2, right? That's the significant digits. We don't here that we don't put the plus or minus that the five percent reconciliation. So if you change these numbers to integers like 63 instead of 63.1. Sends a message that the variability is in there. That's the, the, the last number that you put is your significant digit and your uncertainty. When I see, for me, if I see 55.3, that's me that I know the numbers within that decimal. And we know that that's not true. So one suggestion I have is okay, we, 
I would say to round up the numbers to the million. Um, so that because that gives like a sense of the precision that we can that we have and uncertainty and the uncertainty that agree. we have. Because if not sense the message that we are much better in our uncertainty than what we really are. Yeah, I can't uh, I can round them. I'm okay with the rounding. It's funny, actually, I don't disagree with that. I was actually just looking at you and thinking, did we just create so much more work that that's a reasonable request? <laughs> yeah. um, um, because I think it actually is a reasonable thing to round them off in a way that makes it look more approximate than we counted every screw in the building. If, if nothing else, I think it's worth saying to you that if that helps you rethink the things I think you're already kind of mulling over in your head yeah. as a way to, to because a couple months ago we said I want people to remember a number. Um, I actually tend to agree with, more with Heather that I want people to actually remember a range. I know it's the, it's the hardest thing in our business to do, but mid max. Yeah. And my other comment was, for example, these two slides, slide uh, 32 and 33, one is the estimated effective reimbursement between UA 50 and US 30. I think it would be a much more solid message if you would combine the two. Like the reimbursements are the same except in option E, the only number I could find that is different is in the incentive point one is six and the other one is six point three. I don't know if that's a mistake or that's an error. Uh, that's true. All the other numbers on the top part is the same. If you had UI fifty, UI thirty, top and bottom, and you can compare the numbers in one. I think it has a better message than on one slide I show you 50 and the other ones I show you 30. Oh, by the way, I cannot remember what this was 50 and 30. Do you have them, two others? So which slide do you want to combine? 32 and 33. 32 and 33. Yes, so I have 50 and the other 30. Because the top part, I only saw one number that is different that I, would, I don't know if it's true or not. In no, actually, all the numbers are the same, except that in UI 30, you don't have option F. All the numbers are the same on yeah, the table. I see. So you're just saying keep this and keep add, add cut, one cut. section. One of them is, is the UI 50, UI 50 and UI 30. I think that makes a lot of oh, sense. Oh, okay. And that's really true that the reimbursement rates don't change whether we're targeting a more No, no because, because they're, they're the, the MSBA we're already reimburses up to a certain yeah, level. Yeah, they don't, get, they don't get that. <laughs> so then you will have the project cost for UI 50, the project cost for UI 30, and the re effective reimbursement rates for both of them, and you can compare. You have a summary. What does it mean to go to UI 50, and what does it mean to go to UI 30? Richard, does that make sense? But the reason we want to talk about that here, I mean, this is basically to say that different schemes have different reimbursement rates, but whether we're, our start number is EUI 30 or 50, yeah, I it's a way to reinforce I again the different Yeah, I think there's actually a problem keeping them separate because it makes me, it makes one assume that this, this is, is different. It's, it's, no, yeah. it's the same. Okay. And then we have one minute this one. Or two one. last slides. Or maybe two. Were we, uh, can you make the, um, the grouping of CM and GC to, to know that those are both A and somehow yeah, we, we can do that. highlight right. we can combine them? It. Yeah, or it's just I'll, to do I'll something line. visual to know that these are both A and yeah, this is exactly. what you get for GC versus CM. Yeah, I can outline. That'd be great. OK, we're getting down here the, towards the end here. You would think so. <laughs> so this was just in red or just uh, uh, corrections like option E is there, are we on the same slide? Yeah, yeah. yeah we are. Yeah. Um, option E is, is actually that's an EUI 50 building yeah. and the number is 59.1 for that particular option A. Um, okay. Which is the same number change that was shown earlier. Hmm? You wrote that same number change earlier. Yeah. You made the I'm same lost. correction in two places. Okay. Um, okay. And um, I just thought that we needed something to talk about the fact that we spent the summer doing the cost reconciliation. <laughs> um, we need a slide for that? Or should we just talk about it? Or just talk about it. It was mostly um, 
Fogarty and, and Maya Toda yeah. talking to each other. But that other but I think this is, was trying to follow along. Yeah, I it think is, this is just the addressed. other point. It is addressed in the report. Yeah, I think maybe just to have the slot, maybe even just for something visual, you know, that little summary, what do we call it? The balance, not the balance sheet, the, um, you know what? Yeah, <laughs> I do know what you mean. <laughs> I, I, I just, I'm not sure I want to surface that in the, in the PowerPoint. I almost would say maybe just be prepared to talk about the fact that sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I'd be prepared to talk about it, but I, yeah. don't, I don't think there's a lot of virtue in showing that. I honestly think that just more for the people, numbers. I mean, if, if somebody wants to ask a question about it, great, but I would be absolutely astonished if anyone said, I'm really upset you didn't talk about the dynamics or you know, components of the cost reconciliation process you did at the end of the report. Well, I think people just need to know that did it cost reconciliation? No, I know. But you then, can say you can say that. Ten percent. Yeah, but you can say that without putting a slide up. Yeah, I, I will say. I mean, that. I'm even saying you should say that. But yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Now we're on the last slide. Yeah. We are until we aren't. Yep. These other ones are UI, which UI they are, and whether they are next year, I think it's important. Yeah. I mean, whether they are pre case and the which great fan they are, because also it's, it's different. We talked about this one. Yes. So you want me to indicate what? Well, because we are con you are comparing cost per square foot, right? Yeah. Um, and then. What we don't know if these other ones are net zero, you want 50 or 30. Maybe that's too much information to gather before Wednesday. Um, yeah, I will be able to find out. Okay, see so if you don't have it. But I think, it, uh, well, it's fair to say if any of these, none of these are net zero buildings. They're not. They're so not so that's it, but that would be maybe putting them in another color, not net zero, net zero hours. I think, I mean, the point here is to. Y your eyes are drawn through the yellow, and the point is we're benchmarking. We want to see yeah. how did how did we do in construction cost per square foot compared to comparable buildings, and the answer is pretty good. But um, yeah. when you want to, if you want to say like, well, why? But why is it a little bit higher, even corrected for escalation? It's because it's net zero, right? right. You know, yeah. you get yeah. more for that. Um, so I think that's the point, and that's why I was just like, well, you know, should we put the the EUI 50, which would be probably comparable to what they had there, the e EUI 50 HVAC 6, which gives a cost per square foot of 537, which is pretty much smack dab in the middle of those. I was, that's, that's why I was suggesting this, so that people can look at it and not, and not look at that and say, well, that just proves that you're high. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's what I was trying to figure out. Richard, what do you think? Well, I, I agree. I mean, this seems high, but when you realize that you've placed the burden of net zero on this project, that's the reason. No, I meant... Or the benefit. The benefit. Me, yes. Yeah, the benefit. I would encourage... But, but, yeah. but forgive me. I'm not actually asking what you think of the comment. I'm talking about the slide. <laughs> like, I'm focused on getting this presentation done. Yeah. So, I mean, in terms of what we're seeing on the page... It makes sense. That. Right. <laughs> do, you, do you think it needs to be edited? To, to visually represent some of what you're saying, or not? Well, I think the question does come up in public presentations. Are we building an expensive building? How do we compare relative to what other people are doing? So this kind of a slide is helpful yeah. to reassure people that you're not overspending. Mm -hmm. But the number is high, and until you tell them this is net zero, this other ones are not. I think it has to be graphically in the information to remind the people that the others are not net zero and we are. Do you think that's useful to put in? I think it is useful. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, even if I put an asterisk on our number and a footnote that says that's Yeah, but not a really tiny one. It should be something people can read. Yeah. yeah. So I think people, I think actually reasonably, folk, reasonably speaking, folks could look at this and say, are these literally like animal buildings? And I think the fact that it's, um, Net zero means the answer is no. They're not really like animal 
and you can definitely call it a benefit as opposed to a burden. Yes, but but it but it's still true. And um, do we know for a fact that none of these are net zero? I'm ninety percent. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I, I would I would concur with that. I I mean I, I swear I recently only very recently read something that said there was the first one in Cambridge. In Cambridge, and it's not on this list. I yeah. So that means you can okay. say you can say yes until somebody yes. proves you wrong. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure so before to we our knowledge. None of us knows. That's why I'm convinced. Go find this thing. No, we, I think we just said these are not at net zero. And these are. Yeah. Richard, you've, oh, sorry. I know we're trying to get out of here, but we say at the beginning that the two questions we, are, we were addressing is, is the site buildable and what are the options? And I feel like the question of the buildability of the site gets and mentioned. Are you going to talk about that when you put the floodplain slide up and the fact that you know the various things that you presented in the public meeting a few months ago I thought were very good that look there's a high water table there's this and that but these are all addressable by engineering methods and the site is in fact built on. Yep. Um, yeah I need to remind people of that that previous question that, that it will be I will be reminded of that when I have the uh, floodplain map and I will say that the site is not a swamp which is what some people have been calling it. Um, and we're not in the floodplain, right? We're not in the floodplain, right. My suggestion, bring the previous presentation at the back, because you might have information there that might, might ask you. Well, I, I, can't, I can't bring it as is, because it's probably the wrong figures in it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have to yeah. weed through it very No, fairly. wait, sorry, but some of this, all this other information that you dealt on the previous presentation, and yeah. some people might not have been there, so to have it at hand because it might be. I was going to say, you made a lot of this one. I was going to say, did we, I, I'm, I don't know why I'm skipping yours, I think you're, I think you're saying this. We, you had a slide that talked about methods of, of addressing site conditions, right? Yes. And it's on the report. But yeah, is it, I didn't, it's, it's certainly in the report. It's in the report. report. Uh, I'm trying to remember the slide the now. I'm just, well, it may not be a slide, but I, I, I mean, I guess, I guess to, I would sort of reinforce the point that was made that, again, you've got to, you've got, I think in my opinion, you need to accept that people are at varying degrees of being up to speed. And the fact that there has been a, a large number of people who've said the site should never be built on again. Um, and they're not just saying because it might cost a little more money. They're saying it just shouldn't because it's gosh, it's a swamp. Yeah. And so, if you have good information, which I mean we do, but I mean if you have good information that can address that question, talk about the fact that you don't need to do, you know, pilings in it, and that there are there are other. <coughs> I mean, you don't have to do it. Throw another slide into the presentation, but you, you ought to have something available so that when the subject comes up, you can go to something and talk in more detail about it. Because you can, you can almost predict that it will come up. Yeah. yeah. So I have to say that I, I actually think there should be a slide that answers that question. Like it just one slide shows the and, and where I mean it's it's all that we said, but I do think there should be a slide because I mean you start the presentation with and this is what Ruthie's point was is the site buildable, and we pretty much just go straight into what are the options, you know and. Well, he said he was going to add the floodplain one. Is yeah. that is that enough? If you need something? No, else? I think I think just that one. But that, I think. But but then talk through it because I think yeah. and actually actually I'm, oh, I yeah, guess the more I'm thinking about what Rudy and you just said, Allison. It, here's the here's the problem. There are so many people in town who've had questions, and what doesn't matter if people are, are don't have all of the information or whatever. The reality is, if you jump. And you saw a little bit of this in one of the community presentations where you got a bunch of questions about the site after the afterwards when we were getting into questions, is it gives people the mistaken impression that if you go straight to, yes, it's buildable, let's talk about the options. Yeah. It gives the impression you're being glib about the question of whether the site's buildable, which you're not trying to be. And you have, you have wonderful answers for what we've learned about the site, how one could approach ensuring that a future <coughs> building has good, you know, moisture barriers and stuff like that. Right. So I think it's important. I think it's important to address it. What page is that? What about page eighty-seven? There's a table on page eighty-seven that talks about. Yes. Yeah, that's yes, that's what I was looking for. Yeah, I remember seeing that. Yeah, I think it's similar to the one that's here. 
No, the ones that you have there is the one about the cost of UI search. It's not in the presentation. Well, that, that was that was something that definitely came up in one of our two events, and I think I think I agree there. I think these comments are going to come up, and that as long as Rich is ready to, to, to tackle them as as questions, because we're ne we're never going to be able to get every slide in this thing. And I, I think this is after tonight a pretty good place to be. Yeah, we've unfortunately giving you a little bit of work. <laughs> Okay. Um, but I think you should. I think actually you should take. I think you should go back and think about the question. Yeah. Think about it for a second, and think about the question that that, that we've raised. Yeah. And either it's going to be useful for you to have it. I mean, I guess what you can do is you can have the floodplain slide. But then my point is, your script could include talking through some of the points about answering the buildability right. and what that means, just so that you're prepared. For, you're prepared. Up front for that, because I'm actually also need to be. The more I'm thinking about it, we have been at this too long. Yeah. I mean, after two years, I'm starting to lose the thread. That if you go 30 feet that way, you run into people who, if they've heard anything about this site, they've heard that it was built on an old swamp, That's the first thing and they don't have any good information about it. So the idea that we wouldn't talk about that directly up front makes no sense at all. Yeah, yeah. let's just add one slide. And exactly. <coughs> What else do we have to do tonight? <laughs> well, we, we, we can be uh, effectively done. Um, I just yeah. want to make sure everyone's done here on this topic. I didn't mean well, it that way. Yeah, no, is, is there a good place to put that one liner about here's the tippy top, here's the bottom price range, oh, yeah, yeah. the cost of Amherst? I don't want to have it on the first slide. Like, because, so I just, I be thoughtful about where so you. I'm wondering, you know, <laughs> so we have a slide very early on. Um, that says, is this site buildable? If so, how? Maybe the concluding slide is, is the site buildable? Yes. yes. I think we've demonstrated in the presentation that it is. How do we go about it? You've seen a lot of variations. The range is anywhere from this to that. And all our numbers in here are that, in that's, there with that's the variables. Yes. Yeah, it's the basic tell them, tell them what you're going to tell them, and then tell yeah, them what you told that's them. That's the solution. <laughs> tell them what you told them slide. Uh, one more? Um, not about the slideshow, yep. about back into the report. The community outreach outline is still not in the report. That I, I you tagged it? Yeah, I tagged right. that already. But I don't know if that made it, I don't know if that made it into this edition. I didn't make I did, it. It did not make it into that edition. There's some other changes that I made, didn't make it into here. Okay. Either. So in section seven, there's a list of meetings. Yep. But there, I also provided emails, the, which is on the if you need me to send it again, let me know. Question. The we missed some meetings, right? No, there's yeah, a, okay. a, a uh, document one, two, that outlined the six, methods seven, yeah, by seven, which okay. the, the committee oh, communicated you. with thank you. the community okay. so that we held press release, that we had press releases, that we um, held community forums, that we. Yeah, um, it's just an internal document that laid out our community. So send it to me again. So that and there's a place to put it is on that list. In the yeah, seven. Yeah, probably the head, should headline that section. Okay. Allison? Yes. Thanks for everything. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you, everyone. <laughs> I didn't do nearly as much work as most of the people on the table, and I really appreciate it. So. If you're getting up and walking out, we won't be coming back again. So. Yeah, I know. So thank you for acknowledging that. And yeah. Thank you. Thanks to everything. <laughs> Maria? Um, we, uh, we still have forms, so we're still okay, yes. but uh, you're doing the minutes. Do we, can we say that uh, we do the same thing we did last time, that you will edit the minutes? Yes, I've kind of uh, left uh, that as a standing a into our yeah, 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 yeah. That's okay. the way I've taken it. <laughs> okay. um, um, I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Richard, uh, are, are we, first of all, are we done with the presentation? Because yes, I think so. Okay, so report so. questions. This draft does or doesn't have all the stuff that I sent? The stuff? The, the, all the, um, I had sent annotated like I did the, the presentation, the report. My understanding was that it was incorporated. Okay, I, I just, I didn't look for everything, but I definitely just saw one thing that 
didn't feel like um, I just want to double, uh, I'll double check, I'll look through. Could you? Bef uh, before I go, I will look through and make sure. Um, and I want to just uh, bring up that most of everything I was doing was labeling. It was just like, this is EUI 30, this is, you know, e it, so it was, th there was one sentence though that I really feel like I should, I, I want to bring up, um, and that was in geotechnical. Because you, you, it, it, you reminded me when you said the high water table. It, there's just a scientific thing that makes me crazy because in the description it said that the water was seen at between one and seven feet below surface and that's like all the report there but that's not a simple water table and I think the point that I made I added a sentence that said this does not represent us those values do not represent a simple water table but represent the heterogeneous soils that exist on the site such that there are areas where there's going to be perched water and so right so I just want to I don't want people to say well the water table that boom because you can't have a water table that varies by six to seven feet vertically over a couple hundred feet distance. That's not a water table. So do you want me, to, do you guys want me to read that line because I want everybody to be comfortable with it? Or? Sure, I do want you to read that Can line. you read it in the context yes. of the paragraph? Yeah, let me because see. I, I have a comment about labeling, I think, to emphasize pre-K through 6, 465 pre-K through 6 throughout. Whenever it says 465, it should be pre-K through 6 attached to it. And buried in the text, it, it says, OK, uh, 465 space for pre-K through 6 is not the same as 465K through 6. But not everybody's going to read that particular line. So. Whenever we are labeling things, I think it should be, if you put in the numbers, it should be also the grade five. Yeah, so I, also, I mean, but I don't have useful things to do with this. Yeah, I'm just a little nervous about timing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and there's also, you know, That's also the explanation is sort of like, the pre-K is more generous than what would be required for K through six. So a population of, 465 could be accommodated, a, a population of 465 K through six could be accommodated in these schemes, I believe was sort of the language used in the report too. So, I mean, I don't know that it invalidates a 465 number by that misconception. No, it doesn't invalidate, but the, it's what I'm saying is the cost of a 465 per K through six is not the same as the cost of a 465. It may be slightly less. Can I, can I ask yes. a question? Do we, so, do, do we consider, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm obviously skipping a group. Do we consider a 465 no. K6? No. no. Then no. Why, do we, why do we need to, I mean, if, we, if we've established that we're looking at a 465 because pre K6 and we've said it more than once in the report, why do we have to say that every time? Because when we've never proposed in the report, a, a, a K through six. Because most times when you talk about this, you're talking of about 465 students, and that's the person, that's the number. We know that 465 pre-K through six is a different space summary than a 465 K through six students. We know because we've been here two years. Okay. Somebody that you tell them is a 465 students is a different space a different area than a 465 So I guess my view would be if we if we in fact only say it is a 465 pre-K through six once or twice in the entire report, then I think it should be said more than once or twice. If we say it more than that, then I don't think we need to say it every time right. when we never present a 465 K through six. Uh, Especially at this a, late date with you guys trying to finalize the report. Yeah, if that's a trivial change for you, Richard, then I have no objection to it, but I don't really feel very strong about it. I, I, I think it's a big effort to yeah. go yeah. over the whole thing. And, sorry, I, I have to do a good Find and search. Yeah, search and replace. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that easy. Okay. At least on the figures. It's not that easy. Oh, no. super hard. So um, in Geotech uh, section 4.5, page 87. It's a paragraph that says groundwater is encountered between a depth of one to seven feet below ground surface, which corresponds to an elevation of 167.5 to 174 feet. For reference, the finished elevation of the school is 176 feet. One boring effort to punch to pocket of pressurized water within a layer of barbed clay, resulting in water pushing up through the boring hole. 
Why addition? Like so recommended in the, the geotech. But in the very beginning, this is the intro. Or this is this is a geotech four point okay. five. Okay. Section four. Thank but you. this yeah. is in the Sorry. this is yeah. in the narrative, not necessarily in the, in the oh, it's not in engineer's report. This is in the this is okay. in no. four point five. Eight point seven of this thing, section four point five. So not the introduction. It's where we talk where every where we talk about all geotech stuff. Not the the report itself right. is in the appendix. Right. Okay. This is <coughs> the discussion. The wide my recommendation. The wide variations in groundwater depth over such a small distance, six foot difference in a few hundred feet, does not represent a simple water table, but rather su suggests the presence of heterogeneous soils with varying drainage capabilities. It also, I mean, it explains that, you know, why at one place did you have, you know, this, this pocket of water, and why is it one foot down here and seven feet down there? Because any hydrogeologist is going to look at that and say they don't know what a water table is if they think that that's the water table. So I just want to make it clear that the, 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 the salient point is whenever you build, when you build there, you're going to have to account for the fact that this area literally is going to be a little bit different from that area over there on that same site, not because this you've got a pitch like right. this, but because there's different soils and it drains differently here than even 20 feet over there. That's why the water is at a different depth from the surface. Sorry, it's just a science geek thing. It's okay, I like geeks. So what language did you want to insert? Um, the wide variations in groundwater depth over such a small distance, six foot difference, I guess you could say in height and a few hundred feet distance, does not represent a simple water table, but rather suggests the presence of heterogeneous soils with varying drainage capabilities. Okay, that's, that's, that's been not said. in here. That's not in there, but that's what I wanted to put that there to explain why it varies by six feet. But that has been said to you. I guess a logical question, Richard, would be, do you agree with that sentence or would you modify it? Because the entire point is it's actually your report, so you actually have to say something you agree with. Agree with. Yeah, I'd yeah, I would have to first read it carefully yeah, okay. and understand it, and then I will edit it and insert it. Okay. Yeah, I would feel more comfortable if the geotech report said something like that, and we were just they, it. basically the geotech report had boring logs. Yeah. <laughs> so they, I'm I mean, just, they had the report of the water depth. But, but some really additional like, language is put in this section based upon conversations with the geotech engineers. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't have a problem. Send me the text, calling him up and say, Does this this disagree And he with might this. be able to express it in a way that yeah. is, that I'm, t I'm trying to get it in terms that general public can. Yeah, and I, and I guess my, my position is I'm not against modifying or adding language, but I want to make sure that you and your geotechnical consultant, I mean, in other words, we're not going to sit here and approve a text you're going to drop into the damn report. Right. You're actually going to go back and talk to yeah. your colleagues who are experts in this yeah. and then work up what to, would make yeah, sense to elaborate. Explain the difference between a water table and... That's what I would do. Yeah. Send me the text and then yeah. I'll follow up. And I have one other thing. Because yep. I think these orange tabs are your changes. Yes, I think okay. those are. Um, so there's a change here that I, I would like to, to see if we can maybe modify the modification. So this is where we're talking about, of all things, pre-K. Um, so there's a little, if this is in section two, educational program, page, page is this? 10. Um, and Heather had added, this study identified, this study identified the space needs of a typical pre-K program and did not meet with district staff to determine the feasibility of expanding Amherst preschool program to two locations or to determine the specific need of Amherst program that services both children with special education needs and general education needs in integrated settings. And I would, I'm just wondering if we could simplify that just to, to really say this study identified the space needs of a typical pre-K program and did not go into further study of Amherst's needs. I think that, I mean, it's, you know, there's a lot that we didn't do, um, but that just, uh, it seems like a, too much, I think. It's just to say, we just did it for a typical pre-K. But why isn't Amherst a typical pre-K? That's, well, we don't know what we are compared to other folks. Well, that's from the district website. Okay, but 
I don't know, but we don't know how, how if Amherst is different in pre-K needs from other programs. It's just something that we didn't tackle, right? We just said, we want to look at what it would do to have pre-K, let's say 15, the, the recommendations were 15 per class, right? 15 free classrooms. It was just, we just say, this just looks at, at, and actually we did have some, there are some extra classrooms for, for pre-K. The point is we didn't. I'm actually, well, I actually wanted to ask Heather, I mean, I'm hearing your critique of Heather's yeah. comments. I actually feel like to understand this better, I need to understand what were you trying to say? That for, we developed an educational program that was based on the previous project, which didn't include any pre-K. So that was a fairly well vetted document when it comes to pre-K, we very, and so I think your summary of saying that the educational program that was developed, that this committee really didn't do that level of investigation that was done for the K through six, and that the pre-K, that that level of scrutiny wasn't provided. And I, I, I think it's, I think if we, you feel really strongly just to, to say that, on the other hand, I think it's important to um, provide opportunities to educate the public about what is unique and special about our district, and this would be a way to, a way to do that, and, and, and be thought provoking about the kinds of questions we need to ask when we do endeavor to understand the needs of I think that would be program. great to do, but I think in this context, for, for the report, I think it's it's opening up a discussion where we don't really, we haven't, we haven't discussed it here. We haven't, we really didn't go there as a committee. And that's so exactly what the statement says, is that we haven't, we didn't explore these things. But I think we could make that statement about a lot of different, and I'm just uncomfortable adding that in at this point when, you know, we would have to go back to look at all the discussions we had and the notes on all that. I think it's it, it would be just fair to say, you know, we based it on us. We added 45 pre-K slots, and you know, I'm a typical pre-K. I would be fine with doing that, but to make statements that well, Amherst is different from other pre-K programs, I can't say that. I don't know that. I haven't looked at it. Isn't there something? Isn't there a way of splitting? difference in some ways by it I mean because if you if you only go down to um, you know the study identify the spaces of a typical pre-k program that that's almost so concise that it loses it loses the point that uh, unlike the unlike other aspects of the educational program for k6 um, there are no no specific or detailed program for Amherst was, was developed for this Did study. Did we go in our space? Can I see this? Let me, I'd have to look at the space summary to know if we added Well, I know that, things. I know we, we modified the living hell out of our special needs space in this building based on Amherst specific programming, right? Right, so if the space summary has, if what we did, I mean, like I said, literally, we would have to go back and figure out what did we do well, but I, I know we did not meet with the pre-K director, for example, in the same way you met with the principal of Fort River. Right. You know, that kind of stuff didn't happen. I know when we talked with CPAD, pre-K was not part of that discussion. But, well, but I, but I don't know what I don't know what Mike did. I don't know what discussions he had. I mean, I just think that. You mean on what? Mike did on what? I don't know how much Mike did, and I know that Mike vetted the space summary for pre-K for for pre-K and for for. No, no, no. no, 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 no. The point is, we already know. The point is, we already know. K six was modified and heavily to customize the Amherst, and we already we've talked about that a million times. We already know that. So the so the, the question then that you're raising is, you don't know that the pre K was more or less off the shelf, and that it was not customized to Amherst in particular. I'm. But I'm saying you don't, don't know that. No, I don't know. That. Okay. Does Richard know that? Since you're the one who wrote the report. No, the the ESPEC is the document that was prepared by Mike, and I don't know what he used. Well, the Ed report doesn't even mention pre-K. Yeah. Anywhere in it. Well, if it doesn't mention pre-K in it anywhere in it, then it suggests that Mike didn't customize pre-K. 
I mean, what Maria was saying, he might have customized some of the space summary stuff. I have no idea. But that's something I just Yeah, said. I think he did participate in the summary of spaces. Yeah, I we did. asked him to. I, yeah. I did. But, uh, but uh, uh, what re resources he used and whether he did it solo, they really don't know. Yeah. I think this statement makes too much of an opinion. It's a statement. Read it again. Okay, so for pre K, we've got, I mean, we've got in the space summary speech for pre-k, OTPT for pre-k behavioral and analyst for pre-k, RTI. I mean, we've got those listed, OTPT. Um, so, I mean, I think that there was work that was done. This, I mean, this proposed space summary indicates to me, and, and this is something that Mike went through and said, yes, this is, I, you know, I agree with this. So it suggests to me that he did take into account the Amherst. So I, I, I just don't know that that statement is accurate. Okay. I'm wanting you to recognize Heather, so yeah, it's going. Yeah. Um, the part that is very concerning to CPAC is that dividing our current integrated preschool program onto two locations would be a big shift in what kind of services and how effectively we can deliver that to our preschool students. And that was not something that was fully vetted and was out of the purview of this committee. And saying that, it goes back to like, the can we versus should we? I think it was perfectly appropriate for this committee to answer the question of can we? I just wanted to be recognized that we didn't delve into the should we when it comes to dividing up a very successful integrated program into something that we may not be able to deliver an integrated program on two sites. But I so, think, so I think that that is, I, I am fine with you having that opinion, I'm fine with you expressing that opinion, I am having a problem with that opinion expressed in the context of this report because what we were tasked to do was to look at pre-K through six at the Fort River site at a variety of enrollments. Whether it any whether anything that we did could or could be done or should be done, the should be is not our job. The could be was, and that's what we did. And I think that we took we asked the superintendent, the superintendent gave us information on the space summary upon which this is based, and all those other questions are for a setting that is not our final report. That's what I'm saying. I don't think it belongs in the final report. Well, we relied on the superintendent as the lead educator to draft the ad specs, to review the space summary. He gave it his blessing. I, I, as an architect, I'm not going to comment on that. I, know, I don't know if, if the committee wants to add to that. Um, I leave it up to the community. I think that, I mean, I, I think that um, I don't actually know why it, it would, I mean, I think there could have been even a footnote in there. It doesn't even need to be inserted in the text that simply says that um, this, you know, educational program or whatever it is, the space program, um, uh, creates options or scenarios for uh, Pre-K, um, but uh, no attempt in the in the course of doing that scenario planning, no consideration was made as to its potential impact on current programming as delivery. I mean, I think that's obvious. It's not. It's not. A, I think that's obviously true. And I think if somebody was going through this and they wanted to have the comfort that it wasn't as if there was any. They weren't missing any conversations that occurred. Yeah. I don't see how that hurts anyone in a footnote. I don't. I don't understand why that would have to be singled out for any of this. I mean, there were a lot of decisions that Mike made and a lot of recommendations that he agreed with or didn't agree with, and as he was advising on the space summary, right? So. 
The only reason I'm saying it, the only reason I'm saying it is because if somebody who's been active in CPAC is telling me that CPAC's really concerned that there could be programmatic changes to preschool, and they're worried that this could create an intended impression that that's occurring, seeing the truth, which is that in fact no programmatic plans have been developed along these lines, um, doesn't harm anyone. It doesn't harm anything at all. I mean, I would, I would actually extend that by saying the fact that Rudy thinks that the bylaw shouldn't include I, you know, you know, EUI 50, we've incorporated that into the text. And what he's essentially is setting up a future fight that's going to occur with the town council over what the meaning of the net zero bylaw is. Well, his argument, his argument's perfectly. I don't we, think we said in the text you shouldn't do the EY thirty. We never. We, no, no. We said members of the committee. We, it, we said members of the committee expressed concern right. that EUI fifty does not conform with the, with the town bylaw. <clears throat> so we actually included in the text members of the committee expressing their opinion on a variation in the report. So that actually is a precedent to doing that. But and this is, we're talking, in this case, we're talking about a footnote. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I, I, I don't have an objection to your approach. I think it, it, it splits the difference. Um, that's just my opinion. So you can, you can paint different scenarios in the ed program for another project and I'm not sure what the next project might be. It might be a pre-K through five project, for example, if sixth grade goes elsewhere. That changes a lot of things. So by the same token, if the school committee chooses to handle a pre-K program and special ed in a different way, that changes the program in the square footage. The program in the square footage was some understanding of what what you want. We're not the educators. You need to tell us what the educators, as the educators, not you around the table, but what the educators want. That's been defined. Heather is saying that that, if, that this spec didn't fully address some concerns. Probably didn't address a number of concerns. I, you know, I mean, I'm looking to the committee on, on how to respond. I mean, I don't feel strongly about this. I think it's an opportunity to to educate the public about some of the considerations that we need to be thinking about as we move this project forward. Um, and and letting the public know that what we have and what we value uh, and what makes a lot of our, our preschool programming success, successful and unique is that it is an integrated preschool program. And it is the only game in town. And it is the only game, you know, and and I, I think it's worth mentioning that that we do have an integrated program. And so I don't know, I don't, I'm, you know, I'm maybe the district currently mine. has a, it, instead, you know, maybe it starts off, the district currently has a program that services both children with special education needs and general education needs in integrated settings at, at, Crawford Farm School. Mm -hmm. And this study looked at including early program at Fort River that would serve, but we don't, 45 full-time equivalent students. I mean, maybe maybe that's what we need to do. Um, I think that's what we Because we don't, t we don't talk about the fact that our pre-K program is integrated or special needs anywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have some of the space summary stuff, but we, we don't extrapolate about, about our the same way we do in the education program. I, I, I mean, I, I think the program, clearly the space summary indicates that this is sure. an integrated program. Uh, it, 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 have, it has yeah, Jenna and, and it's it's it No, but it's not integrated. Having a speech therapy classroom does not. I know it's not good sharing. I'm, 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 I'm falling down on my, uh, my duty Thank here. You. We're also uh, running way past. Way past. I, I apologize for this question because I'm out of the loop, but the district is not actually considering any pre no. pre-K programming changes based on anything we're doing, right? No. Right. Like, in fact, the in fact, at one point, the schools forgot that we were even including pre-K, and then there was we a state blow up. Yes, yeah, so we had a months ago because we were doing, about it about a year right. ago. Yes. So I, I can understand that this might raise an eyebrow, but how can we reassure people that we're not? 
nothing we're doing is going to affect the pre-K, actual pre-K. I, pre I strongly, I strongly suggest, uh, would, never mind. <laughs> I mean, the likely, for, forgive me for saying this, but the likelihood that somebody even reads any of these paragraphs is surpassingly low. Yeah. I, 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 would, I would ask at this juncture, Which doesn't feel good to maybe say. just set this aside as much, I realize there's, there's importance well, we here. Well, just take a, take a vote? You know, that's one way to do it. Okay. I mean, we've got a difference of opinion. Okay. We don't have to discuss it forever. And I made an edit suggestion along your lines because you said you would be comfortable with says that this recurrent has an integrated early education program at Crocker Farm School. We looked into a classic, if you want, or a three, three K. That's what we did. But yeah. because we also didn't do a lot of things. But this is what they, re they in the report. That's what it is. Is that reasonable? Yeah, I think if we. You mentioned that the other one I, is integrated, and this I, is what we did. I think we do need to allay fears that there was. I, I think, if I may interject. I, I hear what you're saying. I think it's important that we allay those fears. I'm not sure that we can do that purely by adding words in the text here. I think maybe that needs to come from another place, in another setting, whether that's uh, questions that come out as part of the, the conversation, uh, comments from the school committee, whatever it may be. Because I, I think it's deeply buried, no matter what text yeah. we all would agree to, um, and that it's not necessarily going to provide the reassurance that, that may be needed. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think, I don't mind adding the words integrated. I would be in support of that. But but at this point, I think we should probably not try to rewrite the text in depth and try to resolve the issue other ways outside of the report. May we move on? I don't know what to do with the text. Um, I think, I think what we're going to do is um, the only addition to the text would be to more fully describe the district currently has an early edu childhood education program that services both children with special needs and the general education needs in integrated settings at the Crocker Farm School. Okay. Further explain what is our, and then don't add any of the rest of, okay. um, assuming that the public understands that with the other things we're talking about what can be and not should be done that that the specific difference is a splitting a program that splitting our specific program we did not look at the feasibility of that just like we didn't look at the feasibility of continuing to have three elementary schools in our district so just um, forgive me if we want to make a change Focus back just on what you want the addition to be. The only the only addition to the current text as proposed is to further describe the program at Crocker Farm School to include that that program services both children with special needs and general education needs in an integrated setting. So it w would not so go I'm in. Saying, so I'm just saying that's the that's the edit. That's, that's the, the edit. Or how do people feel about that? Yeah. Just, how about if raise your hands up? That's the suggested edit. Yeah, okay. You were asking for a vote. All yes. those in favor of that edit, please raise, or will support the edit. Please raise your hand in supporting the edit. Okay. 
Okay. It carries? It carries. Okay, then we're done with this. Let's, let, let us move on and, and acknowledge that all things cannot be solved. It's all. It's all. Um, Can I have a correct version? Thank you. Are there yeah. any other, other edits to the report? Here. May we close the report? With, oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. Line. Don't wait yes. too long. Yes. That, <laughs> <laughs> well, I also don't want to get, get something else. No, no one's going to yell at you. Yeah, just, I'm just saying. Uh, okay, so that's the. You, you want a formal vote then? Uh, a hand. No, we've really had a formal vote. In a, in a sense, we accepted the, the folk of the test, we, the text yeah. long, long, long ago. Um, the the next thing I have on my agenda is that I, what I called it was a public announcement. Um, given the timing of everything. It seemed infeasible, and this is something as chair that I kind of uh, took a little bit of maybe too much license on, but it seemed infeasible to get the Gazette to, to publish an article or get them to actually put in uh, 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 what's the other term? Uh, darn letter it. to the editor? A, well, a letter to the editor or, or something. trying to help you. We kind the of, announcement <laughs> section of the paper. Yeah, so I, I, with a little help from uh, the, the subcommittee that was tasked last time, a, a small ad has been placed. I used my own personal money to do this, mostly because I wasn't sure no, that we'd have no, time to get reimbursed. No, no. We should be but, um, <laughs> Or at least to get in line, in time, to get something in the paper for uh, this Friday, um, I gave my credit card. <laughs> so, um, but it, I will read it as follows. It, 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 is, you know, it, it is not a press release, it is not deep, but I think it sends people to the right places to get deeper information, and it reads as follows. Four River School Building Committee will present its final report to the Amherst School Committee and the Amherst Town Council on September 17, 2019 at 6 p.m. in the town room in Amherst Town Hall. Please join the designers, DSKP, as they provide information on a variety of options explored for multiple enrollments uh, using a range of new construction versus addition and renovation and various approaches to sustainable building. Uh, cost information and strategies for complying with the town's town of Amherst's net zero bylaw will also be discussed. Full report will be available at, and I'm not going to read the the uh, link, um, and at the Jones Library after September 17th. So it gets something out there. It's it's not you know it's not a, a fancy way to end it as a public kind of comment, but it felt like a decent compromise, and I will I will take my punishment <laughs> if folks don't like it, but. It's already submitted, right? It is submitted. I cannot have them published. Okay, then that means we don't have to debate this right now. No. <laughs> so yeah. Unless yeah. folks yeah. don't want it to go out. Reimburse the chairman for the expenditure on the end. Second. Is that okay to do? Um, that is an excellent question that I'm going to have the room by the comfort Right. Okay, I got an idea. Why don't we vote that if it's legal to reimburse them, right. we, yeah, do so. yeah, we so. Do. And if it's yeah. not, yeah. don't do anything illegal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It may, it, may be, it may be simple. I don't, probably didn't need to say that. that. I will talk, <laughs> probably didn't need to say that, but I thought I would just. I will, I will talk to Miss Aldrich, and yep. it may be simple to ask the Gazette to add this to our invoice. But I'll just I'll ask her about all approaches. I, I'm sure I could redirect. I'm sure I could get them to redirect so, it. I just so, was so worried about choosing the motion. Has been moved and seconded. All in favor? Okay. Thanks. And that was the last yeah. real thing I have on the agenda. So I'm, I'm, I'm more than willing to entertain an adjournment. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Oops, sorry, second. Second. All in favor? Off we go. Okay.